going to honor here today with a proclamation to come up. Um, and, and right after that, but before she leaves the dais, I'm also going to ask Councilman Vince Sarmiento to join me. And then we'll have the, the Bolivian Consul General Marco Antonio Valverde Carrasco join us as well. So all the Bolivians that are here that are going to be part of that, be ready to come down. So with that, um, let's go ahead and I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation. We'll start our meeting. So please rise. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you can remain standing, our police chaplain, Tom Jones, not the singer. <laughs> Darn. Darn. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Let's pray. Our dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this council, Lord. And Lord, we, we know that you have set them in place, that you've ordained them. And Lord, we ask that you keep your hand upon them, that you give them wisdom, give them guidance. And for those that are here in attendance tonight, Lord, we ask that you uh, give them peace, Lord. Lord, we ask that you lift them up now and give them a special blessing. And we pray that all the proceedings that go on tonight will be in a peaceful fashion, Lord. Lord, most of all, we ask that you just give everybody traveling mercies as they, as they go home tonight, Lord. And Lord, I pray for the uh, Santa Ana Police Department, for the Santa Ana Fire Department, Lord, that you'll continue to keep the men and women there safe and free of harm. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask our congresswoman, please come around here and join me. I want to take this moment and... Um, We've been working on this, believe it or not, for quite some time. But with uh, you know the fact that we have council me uh, meetings on the second Tuesday, and she's often in Washington, sometimes it's easier said than done. But Loretta has done such a wonderful job uh, for so many years that I want to give her this Mayor's Exceptional Citizen Award. And let me just read a couple whereas is, and then I want her to say a few words, and I'll present this to her. Uh, she's been our, our uh, Congresswoman since uh, 1996. And I will tell you that representing the 46th District, she's done an absolutely wonderful job. Um, it's not just the fact that she cares, or the fact that she returns uh, phone calls immediately. But I think it's the fact that she just spends so much of an effort being in the district. We are her district. We are her home. There are a lot of members of Congress that can sometimes drive back home or take the train or a short plane flight. Being from California and having to go back to Washington, I have been with her many times when, as I go back to visit, she's coming in on a red eye literally flying all night to be there to be able to do the meetings and then she has things back here in the district and she's taken another flight late at night and and she's been doing this year in and year out and many many times she's not thanked for that I want to thank her for that I also want to thank her because no project is too big nor too small for Loretta if, if there's somebody that has an immigration problem, she's got immigration people on her staff. If we need you know, money for our streetcar, which is you know, in the tens of millions and, and larger dollars, she's there for that. Um, if, if we need her to strategize with us on something, she's there for that. 
if, if there's any other issue that she knows of here in the city or in her district, she's there for that. And as we look at the success of the city and the success of the region, having this constant caring and, and, and this open heart and, and this ability that she has to just work so hard and not to stop because she doesn't have a middle speed. You know, it, it's like, you know, she just goes and she's in fifth gear and, and she doesn't have second, third, or fourth. She's got zero and then she goes and she's always going for our city. So as I present this to her, um, you know, for her beautiful spirit and support, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one other thing is that sometimes we don't see what she does in Washington because she does so much, but she's worked her way up and she is now, for example, the highest ranking female on the House Armed Services Committee and the Homeland Security Committee. So, you know, she's... You know, you should have applauded for the other stuff as well, because it was all good. And yeah, yeah, for everything else that Loretta's done. And so now before I present this to her, let me please have her say a few words. Congresswoman. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you to so many of my friends who showed up. You, gosh, thank you. Thank you. You're, um, I'm very touched. I'm very touched. You know, I mean, I, I want to really tell you, and this is, this is really how I feel about this job. It's not a job. You know, I, I have a privilege, the privilege of being chosen by you to go back to Washington, D.C., and to fight every day not just to fight for the problems that we have that we need to fix, but to fight for the opportunities to allow your dreams to happen. And that's, I think, even more important than the problems that we're trying to fix. It's the fact that you need to believe in our nation, and you need to believe in our state, and you need to believe in our city, and you need to believe in this district. You know, I'm... Yeah, yeah I mean... A lot of you know this, but my parents were both born in Mexico, and they both came. They came separately here, and they met in Los Angeles, and, you know, my dad decided that Anaheim was where he wanted to settle, and he had seven kids. My mom and my dad had seven kids there. And, you know, for, for all the struggles that I saw my parents do, you know, seven kids, imagine that, being a stay-at-home mom with seven kids. And, and my mom would cook, and my mom would uh, sew our clothes, because we were too poor, quite frankly, to be able to go and buy something in the stores with so many kids. And so I was very lucky, because I learned to cook, and I learned to sew, because I had to, you know, out of, out of desperation and need. And my dad would work six days a week, and we had this little green, ugly green, you know, Rambler station wagon, you know, in the time when there were no seat belts or car seats or anything like that. You know what I'm talking about. And, 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 but I got to grow up here. And, you know, Orange County is just a really incredible place, and its county seat, the city of Santa Ana, is really a Astounding, astounding. Today I had the pleasure of having the chairman of the committee, um, he's from Dayton, Ohio, come here today. And I got to show him, he's a Republican, the chairman, get to, be, you know, the Republicans, when they control, they get to be the chairman, right? When I control, I'm going to get to be a chairman. See what I'm saying? But he came here, he came here today because I wanted to show him what we have. What we have, unbelievable things happening here that most of our citizenry don't even know. You don't know, many of you, for example, that when you get on a plane anywhere, except for, of course, Russia and the former Soviet satellite places, if you go on a European plane, if you go on a Brazilian plane, if you go on a Boeing, if you probably half of that plane is made right here right here in Santa Ana and Garden Grove and Anaheim and Orange. 
I mean, we, we have this technology and this capability, this industrial capability that the rest of the nation has lost, but we still have it. You see, and we have people every day who go into work every single day and make sure that that plane is safe for us to get on and, and people who go and they make our streets and wonderful, wonderful. I, I know, um, Vince, you, I, you know, hats off because I remember five or six years ago when you said, I have this dream that we're going to fix every street in Santa Ana. And, you know, it's been hard, right? All those cones and everything. But every street is being fixed in Santa Ana, and that's a really big plus for this city. I mean, we are, we, this, this city is, you know, I, I have to say, Kay Housley is my next door neighbor, and she and the Assistance League put on the first taste of Santa Ana just about a week ago and was so great. And we should have had all of Santa Ana there, you know, and that's what we have to do. Things are really turning around and looking great in this city, and I get to live in this city. You know, and it's exciting to see. So I am privileged, honestly. It is an honor to represent you in the United States House of Representatives. And going back to my parents, you know, they're just like so many parents. And our family is like so many families here. We've had our, our tough times. I have two brothers who lost their homes in this recession. Some of you know them because they had a company here, you know. But I got to tell you, this is a great country, and we need to dream, and we need to dream big in it. You know, my, my parents are the only parents in the history of the United States to send two daughters to the United States Congress. Think about that. Think about that. This is a great country, and it's a great city, and God bless you all. And, you know, our office is open, and we do office hours, and we want you to come and talk to us. We want to see what you need. We want to help you with your dreams, and thank you so much. It is a privilege and an honor to, to represent you there. And, and thank you, Mayor, so much for acknowledging me. Loretta, this is probably the first time you've ever gotten an award where it says, you know, that you're an exceptional citizen because you are. And, and, and when you just heard her words, you can see the energy that I was talking about. And you can see the heart. You can see the love. And, and I know this is not a, a job for you. It's a love that you have. And we want you to remain in love for, with Santa Ana. It, it's a love affair many of us have. And, and, and that, I think, is what's making the city better and better. You know, whether it's the streetcar project or a new restaurant that opens or somebody that opens up their business or somebody that buys a home and they start making improvements to their home, as you did when you bought a home here and started making improvements. It, it, it's all because we want to make this our home. We want to make this a city that we love. And together we're making a better city. And you as a congresswoman are doing so much to help us. So with this... Let me present this to you. I know you will hang it proudly and know that it comes from all of us and it comes from the heart. Thank you, Loretta. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before the Congresswoman leaves, I want the Consul General from uh, Bolivia, uh, el eh, por favor venga el, el, el Consul Nuevo de Bolivia, and uh, she, along with uh, Councilor Member Vince Sarmiento, who is Bolivian, um, we're going to all together make a, a, a presentation uh, to him. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, yes, I think I am the only Bolivian on the city council. I can be sure of that. <laughs> a lot of times, um, my wife is from Zacateca, so I also say I'm the honorary Mexican on this city council. So that's a good thing. Um, but I, too, before we start on this presentation to recognize uh, the newly appointed uh, Consul General from Bolivia, I wanted to say thank you to the Congresswoman as well because I know that uh, her and I have worked together on many important things and we see her in this community so often even though she's in Washington doing s so much good work 
But whether she's doing work on the Armed Services Committee, whether she's doing work on health care, she's always here and she's always in her district asking us what is it that we can improve on. And so when we run into each other at different events, I know that we have a friend and an ally and somebody who represents us uh, extremely well with integrity um, and with the highest of ethics. So, uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for doing everything that you do for our city and being a constituent of ours here. We just finished a small reception next door in the foyer of City Hall, and uh, it was a small, intimate uh, group and gathering of uh, Bolivians who, uh, who reside here in, in town and reside throughout the county. Uh, tomorrow is Bolivian Independence Day, and this was the first time we wanted to, uh, this is the first time we've had to recognize the day because we have another occasion, which is the newly appointed Consul General uh, that represents the, uh, Bolivia here in the states. And, you know, most Consul Generals represent a, a county or maybe half the state or a state. He represents multiple states and he has a lot of responsibility throughout the west coast of the country that uh, he has to go and represent um, folks who are uh, nationals uh, from, from Bolivia. So we were very honored to have him here because he and I just a few days ago took a tour of the city and he knows that the community is much, much larger than it was uh, just a few years ago. It's grown uh, leaps and bounds and my family and my mom is in the background can attest uh, that we, when we arrived in 1965, it was a very small population, and now it's grown to hundreds and thousands. So I wanted to do something special for uh, our community because it is something that's, that's dear to my heart. I was born in La Paz, uh, you know, and came when I was a year old, but I have the same immigrant story that, that the congresswoman was talking about, I'm sure the mayor has, and all my colleagues on the council, and many of you out there, which is, when we leave our native countries, we always keep it close in our heart. We never forget where we came from. And we bring a little of the tradition and the culture here. And we try to make this our home. And we have such diverse experiences. And the beauty of Santa Ana is that we can share that with one another. And that's what's great. Because whether we're from Mexico, whether it's Zacatecas, or any place else, Central America, South America, um, we always embrace the diversity that we have in this city. So I wanted to welcome the Consul General here and uh, let him have the floor and speak to us for a few minutes because what he and I have been talking about are different projects that we can work on together, providing services for um, you know, Bolivian nationals living here in the county, living here in, uh, in Southern California, but just being another place where he can help improve the community, which is what we all try to do in any of our capacities, whether we're at the local level, at the county level, state and federal. And, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the senator who I see in the background, Senator Correa was with us at the, um, at the reception as well. We all, are, we all work together very well to make sure that we do good things for the community. So um, without further ado, I wanted to take this opportunity to, to um, recognize uh, Council General uh, Marco Antonio Valverde Carrasco, um, newly appointed here to recognize what is the eve of uh, Bolivian Independence Day, August the 6th, and have him say a few words uh, before us. And I think the Congresswoman has uh, a presentation as well. Would you like to do that now, Congresswoman, or after uh, the Consul General speaks? Why don't we have the Congresswoman say a few words before? Well, mine will be short because I'm interested to hear all of the things you're going to do with the community. Um, uh, Señor Marco Antonio Valverde Carrasco, we welcome you to our home. And as you know, um, Santa Ana in particular is a very, very open and welcoming community. And we expect wonderful things from you. We expect um, that you will not only help your own population, but that you will share what comes from your country. You know. We see so many problems right now. Think about the issues we're having with uh, strife and civil war and, and poverty in some of our Central American countries and how that affects us, how we're trying to fix that issue happening at the border. I mean, it's a very, very difficult and complex issue. And so what it teaches us is that we need to understand even better 
other countries, especially those that are in our backyard. And so I hope that you will impart with us, that you will teach us, that we'll, you will teach us about your country um, so that we can continue to have great relations with, with it. So on behalf of the United States Congress, I would like to give you a certificate from the Congress recognizing your, no, your new post here in the 14 states or whatever it is that you get to represent a very, very vast array of the Western United States. Um, but more importantly, don't forget us here in Santana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Congressman, Senator, Mr. Mayor, Representatives. It's an honor to be here in Santana. I represent the plurinational state of Bolivia to Los Angeles and the Western Coast. Even though my first priority are my Bolivian nationals, we should not forget that all of our countries were made by immigrants when, when, the, when they refounded. All of us are immigrants. All of us have stories of immigration. And as duty as all diplo diplomats, in my case, I will not only work for my community, but for the entire community. No matter what country they come for, they come from. Because our duty is to work for every single person. That's the basic. <laughs> That's the basic test on our new constitution that was approved. That's why we changed from a republic to a plurinational state, because we represent not only one, but many communities, many, many ethnics, many people, whether they're born in, in Bolivia, or they migrated to Bolivia, or they're just there temporary. Our duty is to work for them, like the United States Constitution says, for the people and by the people. That's why this is an honor to be here among elected officials. We we gain our independence, 1825, that's 189 years ago. The road is hard, it's not easy. But with democracy, it makes everything easy because we work for the people and by the people. That's what we're gonna work with, with, the, with the city of Santana, not only for the Bolivian community, but the entire community. My consulate's open to anyone that requires our assistance. We may have a small team, which, uh, uh, I don't want to brag, but I probably have one of the best teams. I have <laughs> Adriana Pacheco, our counsel, Luis Daniel Niño de Guzman, counselor officer, Rocio Ceballos, counselor officer, and Jorge Gonzalez, our counselor officer. They're one great team, and we will work for the entire community. Even though our jurisdiction is the entire coast, we will work as far as we can and as much as we can for this community. We ins we're going to start, we're going to open an itinerary office that will be working every so often here in Santana to work for the good of the community. And whenever we are required, we'll be there. But this is a great honor to be here. Thank you very much. And I will give the utmost of myself to work for our community because we have very, an example huh, representative here, even though he was not born here, he gives his utmost for the city, and I will do that for also for my community and the entire community. Thank you very much. And before I uh, make this uh, presentation of the proclamation to the uh, Council General, let me just say, if, if, you all, if you will all indulge me, if I say a few words in Spanish, because we have many uh, uh, Bolivian, Bolivians from the community joining us. De parte de, el concejal, de los concejales aquí de la ciudad de Santana, quiero hacer esta entrega de esta proclamación reconociendo al nuevo uh, nombrado uh, uh, cónsul general de Bolivia, reconociendo el día, día de independencia que es el 6 de agosto. Como nos acaba de decir de los planes y los proyectos que tenemos, me da mucho gusto que él habla tanto de la comunidad. Entonces esta, esta entrega es todavía más especial. Y estábamos en la recepción y el alcalde me, me acompañó y me dijo que, pues creo que él conoce Bolivia mucho más que yo, porque él va seguido, va a La Paz, va a Sucre, va a Cochabamba y Santa Cruz. Entonces, uh, la verdad, yo le tengo que platicar a él para que me, me esté dando los datos de qué pasa en mi país. Pero, um, 
Mañana ya cumplimos 189 años de existencia en Bolivia y entonces de parte de todos, de todo el pueblo boliviano aquí en Santana y en el condado de Orange, le queremos dar esta, esta proclamación al nuevo cónsul general para que siempre tenga un recuerdo de este pueblo tan especial que es Santana, que ha sido la puerta de, ent de entrada para muchos bolivianos. De este, en, este, en estas ciudades donde muchas familias han crecido, empresas, personas que han ido a lograr bastante y representar el país con, con mucho honor. Entonces, yo le doy esta proclamación, señor cónsul, con mucho orgullo de parte del pueblo boliviano y más que nada de la ciudad de Santana. Entonces, felicidades y muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Now, if I may, we're going to go on to our next presentation, uh, and that is led by uh, uh, Don Cribb, who I consider the founder of the Artist Village and the Artist Movement. So, Don, if you're here, please come forward. But also, uh, I want others that have been uh, leaders and members who established the Artist Village. Uh, you know who you are. If you're here, please come forward. Daniel Arivu, Randy Au, Brian and Lisa Biss, Terry Brand, Liam Browning, Richard Chirani, Cheryl Curran, Joe Duffy, Jeff Fish, John Godhold, Ray Siriku, Cherie Kerr, Jerry King, Dennis Louie, Tom Lutz, Gil Morero, Mike McGee, Lisa Mills, Cindy Nelson, Rob Richardson, Judy Floor Reynolds, Mike and Connie Sasso, Jerry Schwartz, Ernie Vasquez, and Jim Walker. Uh, those of you that are present, please come. If you can stand behind me, what we're going to do is we're going to recognize them all, but I'm going to have Don be the only one that, uh, that addresses us because I think Don has been a unique um, voice in making so many things a reality here in Santa Ana. Um, uh, Don, why don't you stand over here a little closer, please? Um, let me first, uh, you know, present um, the certificates of recognition to the folks uh, here with us, and then afterwards, I'm going to present a proclamation to Don Cribb. So I'm going to have Gil Marrero help. He's also. Um, you know, uh, one of the many honorees that are here. And let, let me just tell you that every one of these individuals has a story to tell, at least one, if not many, many more. I mean, I remember when John Gothold, you know, was moving from Irvine to Main Street. It's been a while, but it's been a magical period of time. And then, you know, living in, in, in uh, French Park and, you know, his daughter going to the high school of the arts and all that. Mike McGee, you know, with uh, Cal State Fullerton and that Grand Central Art Building and the magic that that brought. Because now we had folks down here that were students at Cal State Fullerton, but were living in the artist village and just, you know, causing such excitement. Um, you know, Gil Morero that, that, that never is found a property that he can't even, he can't think of either buying or selling to somebody. He's a, a, an amazing broker, but, but, but he always sells it up. He always sells it with a dream. He, also, he always tries to do it for a, for a higher uh, and better use. You know, Richard Chirani, when you came into the Second Street Mall, and, and, and you gave us that fountain for free, which now, you know, people take for granted, but that wouldn't be there, you know, were it not for the generosity of your family. I mean, you know, Cherie Kerr and all those years with the Orange County crazies, and I remember Don telling me about, you, you got to meet her, and, you know, she's not crazy, but, but, but the group is called the crazies, and, and, and we started here in Santa Ana, and it went, you know, so, so well. And, and, and Dennis, I mean, You've lost a lot of weight, Dennis, and that's a good thing. You've lost a lot of weight. Maybe it's playing tennis. I'm not sure what you're doing, but hopefully a lot of it, it's just working at that Yost Theater and making more dreams come true. And, um, you know, Jerry King that's worked on so many projects for so many years, making, you know, dreams a reality here in the city. Uh, and, um, and then Brian, I don't know where Lisa is, but 
but Brian and 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 Lisa Bist, um, you know, have been just a, tr a tremendous team. You know, Rob Richardson, you've been on the city council, you've been on the school board, you've been a member of the community, you're, you're part of the historical society, you're a walking encyclopedia. Um, you know, he, he even knows weird information like 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 phone numbers of people that have passed away. You know, the, I, I, I mean, he, he just has so much data. All right, enough information on that, but. But 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 he is a walking encyclopedia. Look and and, and Joe and, and and Dennis and you know there's uh, you know there's many others that aren't here today. Uh, I know one of them is Tom Lutz, and and uh, we're going to recognize him in absentia. And, you know Lisa Mills. I remember when they were working very aggressively on this. It, it's been a lot of us that have been you know uh, really really touched by that enthusiasm. But you know but but the person I think that has been a leader of that enthusiasm has been Don Cribb. Yes. Yes. It's been Don Cribb because Don, you know, he's like a, a, an entity that is... Remember that, that movie many years ago, Lost in Space, and some of you may remember it, and, you know, whatever, no matter what chapter you saw, they were trying to do the same thing and they were always struggling and you had that you know the robot and you had you know the the family and all that well it doesn't matter every time you come in touch with with Don he's in the same place and his place is he is dreaming and he's always got a new dream and it's always exciting and it's always infectious and it's always something that can be realized and look I'm not saying that we have realized every dream Don has had because the universe isn't big enough for that. But, but we've realized a lot of dreams that Don has had. And I consider Don a visionary. If an, and a visionary to me is somebody who has a dream. Yes, applaud, applaud for that. It's, it, it, it's somebody who has a dream, who believes in that dream, and who is so persistent that the dream gets realized. It's somebody that, that, that can plant seeds, many different seeds, and with time, they begin to blossom. You know, it's somebody that realizes that a huge oak tree doesn't occur in a day. It's somebody that can see the future and say, look, if we do this, and then we do that, and then, and then, then we add it, you know, and, and, and we change it, and we wait, that tree will grow, and then eventually becomes a huge, huge tree. So when you think about the artist village, when you think about arts and culture, when you think about the high school of the arts, when you think about the expansions at Bowers, when you think about, you know, Third Street, when you think about Second Street, when you think about projects like the Yost Theater, or, or when you think about, you know, some of the, um, you know, the iterations that have occurred. Because when we began, I remember we would go down in the artist village and there'd be about six of us and we thought it was a crowd. We, we, we thought, boy, this is really something, because we'd activate the phone tree and six people would show up. And, and, and Don was activating the phone tree. And, and then we'd sit there and we'd say, boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could have a Memphis here? Or if we could have a Gypsy Den? Or if we could have a Lola Gas Bar? Or wouldn't it be nice if we had some stores? Or wouldn't it be nice if, if, if the Santora could be you know, dedicated to the arts? Or wouldn't it be nice if we could bring in a Cal State Fullerton within that Grand Central Art Building? You know, wouldn't it be nice if we could have the Orange County Center for Contemporary Arts? You know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice? And, 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 and look, he's got 30 more of those projects, and I want to do this because I think it's important to recognize Don, but also I want all of you to also, you know, become Don Cribs in the sense that you all need to be dreamers. You all need to be pursuing those dreams. And now, boy, the dreams are really starting to, you know, to, to gain strength. Um, I was recently having, uh, you know, lunch with an attorney down in Aliso Viejo. And we were at a chain restaurant, and he began apologizing to me, saying, you know, I know this is not nearly as cool as Santa Ana. I know that the restaurants and the shops and the environment and the hipness and the coolness that, that, that you all have and the diversity and the variety, 
We don't have it in Aliso Viejo. And 10 years ago, that statement you know, would be in a parallel universe. It couldn't be here. But that statement now can exist because of Don. Don has been that constant crusader, that constant voice, that person that never stops dreaming. And, and, and that has limitless enthusiasm, you know, to, to, to get all of us to, to do more and more and more. So with that, um, before I present this to you, Don, please uh, give us some of your thoughts. I only have a half an hour, so let me start now. <laughs> he was limited because of this man. While, while I'm here, I just want to recognize, not recognize this man, too. <clears throat> because uh, this city simply would not be this city without this man right here. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, when everybody else is saying no, and there are a lot of naysayers in this town, a lot of people who want to talk about people in a negative way, no matter what their intentions might be, this man was always standing there for the things that we needed to do. And he always supported, even if he wasn't the person championing the project, he was always there to support it because he was e educated himself enough and be willing enough to put his neck in the noose to support it. And so I think he deserves a huge amount of, uh, of credit for what's happened to this city that so, much of, so many of us, uh, of us love and how many people that come to this town fall in love with it. And while I'm on that note, I want to say one thing. The, San Ana is an intersection. <clears throat> you don't have to be an intersection. We're not a coastline. We're not a mountaintop. Intersections invite interaction between different people. So why don't we celebrate everybody, not just a few groups of people. Identify them as you will. But when you have an intersection, the prospects of that intersection, that experience of that intersection are unique and they're hugely opportune. We need to fully realize that the different cultures of this area are not just a few, they're many. We need to recognize the Middle Eastern, the black, the Asian, the Latino, of course, because they're a part of us. We grew up with the Latino community, and the Anglo community, and the arts community, and the gay community. All of them work together to create a city, and that's who we really are. We're not somebody's suburb. We need to behave like a city. And that means we welcome. We don't have a train station say, oh, we only want a couple of people to get off here. No, we want everybody to get off, and we want to impress them when they do. When they come into the city, we need to create a welcome that they, we want them to stay here if they'd like it. I always say about the train station area, the last thing we want to do, or the best thing we'd like to see, par pardon me, if they meet there, when they look, wait for the train, they're asking each other, why are we going home? This satisfies why we came here in the first place. So I'm hoping that that being said is an inspiration for us to look at all the opportunities, all, all the cultural, all the socioeconomic, all coming together in the same, is the highest form of wealth. It isn't just the Newport beaches. Those people are ready to go to sleep anyway. And <laughs> <laughs> We're here to do work, and that work is life. It isn't that variety is the spice of life. Variety is life, and I think we need to celebrate that. Thank you. Don, um, this proclamation recognizes you as the founder of the Santa Ana artist village but really it's the whole Santa Ana arts movement it's the art and culture movement and I know that there's a lot of folks standing behind you and a lot more that aren't here frankly there are many others out in the community that should also and need to be added to this list I mean I see folks like like Tim Rush that you know has done so much um, uh, you know, James Kendrick in the back uh, ground and many, many others that are not in this room. So part of what I want to do is we're going to continue to recognize, you know, folks and friends and people that have contributed because this really has been an effort, but it's an effort that didn't start a year ago nor five years ago, nor ten years ago. Really, this began over 20 years ago and that's what it takes sometimes to change a culture, to change a perception, to encourage people to invest in the city and to come and to, and, and to play a role. And I'll tell you, if you've never had a Don Crib tour, ask, ask him for one and he will take you. He, he puts people on the car. And I've learned from that because I do the same thing. And, and now so many of the folks that are coming and investing in the city is because you put them in the car, you drive them around, you show them the town, they fall in love. Before you know it, they're in escrow. 
You know, before you know it, they're buying something. They're investing. They're 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 donating. They're belonging. They're participating. So so for your uh, you know driven uh, enthusiasm, Don, for your dedication as an advocate for the development and enhancement of the city's cultural resources. Back in 1987, that's when I first got elected to this council, uh, 86, but I started in 87, Don Cribb formed the Santa Ana Council of Arts and Culture, and it's currently the Arts and Cultural Commission, and it has been many iterations, you know, the, the Randy Owls of the world, and the fact that they started working with that council, and now they're over at OSHA, and they're, they're teaching, and they're now part of of a whole system. You know, the fact that you can drive at, in the middle of a, of a Saturday night and it's all buzzing. I mean, it used to be empty. It used to be a bowling alley. Now it's a place where people can't find a place to park and we're having to build more parking structures. And I know the city manager is working on that along with the council. And that's a good thing. So, you know, for being a founder, for being a visionary, for being a, a true leader, for being persistent, uh, I give you this, uh, this uh, special proclamation, Don. Thank you for your commitment. I, I just want to say a couple words about who's up here. These are the people that had shared the vision before it got to the politics, basically. This is the, the undercarriage of what happened before the foundation was actually laid. So I know that Tom Lutz deserves an enormous amount of credit. So do you, Tim Rush. There are a lot of people out here. Jim Kenrick has been a champion for this situation for a very long time. There are people like Kathy Moorhead and a lot of people that aren't even here. But this is the group that actually created the foundation for the effort that made this real. So I just want to recognize them while I'm speaking and thank them too for being a partner with me to make this happen. So thank you all. Councilmember Michelle Martinez, uh, please, if you can come on down. Do you want me to call your folks? Or, or, okay. Um, if I can have uh, the USA uh, National Karate Foundation. Uh, I know uh, that uh, Peter uh, Monsong and, and Sensei Jose Lopez and Sensei Cecilia Mauser and Sensei Peter, if you could all come on down, please, at this time. I know you have some of your people here. And John Franks, hello to you. I see you out there on the second row. Thank you, Mayor Polito. Here they are fast approaching. As our mayor mentioned, today I am recognizing the students who participated in the U.S. Karate Federation National Competition. We have coaches Sensei Peter Mangtung, Sensei Jose Lopez, and Sensei Celia Mauser. And then our students, if you guys could please just come around. So as our, our coaches approaches, um, on July 10, 2014, nine students from Santa Ana traveled to Nevada to compete in the USA National Karate Federation National Competition. These students have prepared for quite some rigorous time, and um, they've actually practiced five times a week for five hours a day. Um, the students brought home one gold medal and five bronze medals, so let's give them a round of applause. So if I could please have Sensei uh, Pete Mansung, if you could please come up here and say a couple words about your team. I'm gonna delegate this to my senior member, Jose Lopez. I'll put him on the spot. Okay, you're putting him on the spot, all right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
That's so much I can say about these kids. I'm one of the generations from Santa Ana. I grew up in Santa Ana. This man deserves all the credit. So if I can get a round of applause for Peter Mangosing. <laughs> He's our chief instructor. Uh, I only have a minute, I know. But I'm just going to tell you my lifestyle, uh, my story. Okay? These are our students. They work hard. They represent our city of Santa Ana. Back in 1990, back in 1990, Kiyoshi Mangosing pulled me off the streets, turned me into what I am now. A good citizen, an instructor, a father. Uh, thank you. And to take these kids out to see something else, at the city of Santa Ana, and they go represent to Reno, Nevada, and to be competing with worldwide competitors, national competitors. This is our pride. This is Santa Ana pride. All the students, all the ones that qualified, all the ones that made it, uh, it would not be possible without the parents, without the coaches. And once again, I have to give props to my instructor, our chief instructor, Peter Mangosing. Thank you. Sensei, I'm not sure if all the students are here, so what I'm going to do, just in the interest of time, if you can just please share with me if which ones are here and actually competed and actually won, and then, because I would like to present them these certificates. Um, so is, is this the list here? Um, and, and they're here, because I know there's, there's more. There's only two okay. that are not here. Okay, there are only two that are not here, okay. So first, uh, let me uh, provide uh, a certificate of recognition to both the coaches, um, to um, Peter uh, Mansungsing, uh, thank you for your dedication and commitment to you thro uh, throughout our karate here in the city of Santa Ana. I can never pronounce your last name, Peter, so my apologies. Mangonsi. 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 Mango. 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 Okay, next, uh, it's, this is an easy name. Sensei Jose Lopez, thank you for your commitment and dedication to, uh, to all you. Do we have any of our students here that would like to say a couple of words about your experience in Nevada? <laughs> you guys are all shy? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go with uh, Celia Mauser. She's not here. Anna Diaz. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Pamela Diaz. <laughs> Jacob Escamilla. Alexa Lopez, <laughs> Luis Morales, <laughs> Manuel Resendez, <laughs> Emily Sandoval, <laughs> and I think that is it. The rest are not present, correct? Let's all give them a round of applause and their parents as well. Thank you, uh, Councilman Martinez. Um, you know, the group, uh, the work done by the Sensei and all these uh, young people is just so, so wonderful. Um, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take public comment a little bit later. Um, I don't want to lose any more council members because um, some uh, uh, Councilman Benavides, I know, is going to have to leave early as well. And we may or may not get Saltina Hedo back because he's at a funeral and uh, council member Reina is uh, out on a, on a vacation and um, Councilmember Sarmiento is on his way to the airport uh, later uh, in, a, in a very short period of time. So with that, if you will, we'll still take public comment, but I'm just going to do it later. What I'm going to do right now is just direct our attention uh, briefly, if we have any uh, comment, uh, to the, um, I really want to get into the locally preferred alternative uh, and that whole discussion about the streetcar. Um, but before I do that, just if we can 
because I know this will be very quickly. If the council will indulge me, let's go into the uh, uh, financing authority uh, agenda just for a moment. Um, Madam Clerk, if you're following me, I'm going to go into that. I will entertain a motion on the so consent. Moved. Is there a second. second? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Um, uh, item number four, the, um, well, well, we've already got the, that was a consent calendar. Now the resolution, uh, item number four, uh, the business item, I will entertain that motion. So moved. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed motion carries. And now I want to go to the housing authority. I'd entertain a consent uh, counter item. So, so moved. One and second. two. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mo the motion carries. Item number three, the quarterly report on contracts. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed motion carries. So with that, uh, we're now ready. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'm going to take on the locally preferred alternative, the streetcar project. Um, do we have people that wish to testify on that? Okay, so let's, um, we'll hear testimony and then we'll go straight into the item. That's item 55C. Uh, Robin Cook, followed by Sam Romero. And as I call your name, just come and sit in the first or second rows, please. And then uh, Madeline Spencer. And then uh, Cynthia Perez. 55C. Um, I looked at it earlier today. I think 5th Street is a better choice than 4th, but I don't know all the details going on. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, before the next speaker comes up, I'm just going to uh, uh, suspend what we're doing for a moment. I know on item 85A, we're going to be continuing that. That's a work study session item. So a lot of people aren't sitting here waiting us to talk about medical marijuana and all that, um, and as well as 28. So I would entertain a motion right now to continue both of those so items. Moved. We have a motion by Councilman Mesqua, second. Second, second by Benavides or Martinez, whichever the clerk chooses. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. So for those folks in the audience, that means item 20A. Um, and also the work study session 85A, I believe it was. No, it's just a regular. Uh, no, it's just a regular work study session that's been continued. So we're not going to do it today. We'll do it at a subsequent council meeting. So if you guys want to go home and watch TV or do whatever, uh, you're you're welcome to do so. I just want to let you know early so you're aware. Um, so with that, um, we've had Robin Cook. Uh, any other item you want to handle right now? Um, yes, if we can do um, 85A, and I also would like to continue 50A, which is the 45-day um, moratorium on the recycling. I would like to continue that for 30 days. Um, All right, let's take that one first, Council Member. Please make a motion on that like, one. I would like to continue 50A. So uh, continue 50A. There's a motion. Is there a 30 second? 30-day continuance. City Manager wants to speak on it. Yes, Ms. Okay. City Manager. <clears throat> Two issues, uh, Mayor and members of the City Council. I do believe that you would need five votes for that item to be successful in any case. But we do want uh, the Council to be aware that we might have to issue those permits uh, because of some issues. And if, if you want to know that, we can have the Planning Director come up. No, we just continue the item. Okay, uh, just because it doesn't, but I just want people well, to Well, look, we don't, we don't have the votes for the moratorium. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, so we'll just continue to the next regularly scheduled meeting. And, and in the interim, do your best to uh, you know, keep our option open for that moratorium. Okay. Um, so with that, we have a motion. Second. We have a second by Mesquite. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes unanimously. Uh, Councilman Martinez, I think we're also talking about 85A, yeah, were correct. we? Yes. Um, why don't you say a few words on that? Um, I'm not sure if we have public comment on that item. Do we? We do. So do you want to wait after the streetcar? Let's wait. Are you cool with that, David? Because I know you have to leave. Sure. All right, we'll do the streetcar. If you can pull those, Madam Clerk, so we're ready to go when we go. Uh, Sam Romero, you're on next, sir. And then followed by Madeline Spencer. And then Cynthia Perez. Yeah, I just want to follow up on what uh, uh, Councilman Sarmiento said as far as preserving the traditions of... Uh, of your native countries, although our family came to this country in 1898, we love the traditions of, uh, the, of Mexico. And uh, we're a little concerned on the streetcar, what it's going to do to all the fiestas that we have, uh, the, the cultural, the traditions, that sort of thing. You know, the Cinco Mayo, 6th of September, Day of the Dead, how we're going to preserve that, how, what, what's going to happen. 
I know we took a bus tour with, I believe, uh, what was her name that worked with the city under uh, the city manager, I believe it was, Jill, Jill uh, Archer. We took a uh, tour on the possible routes and we brought that up to her as far as what's going to happen to the Cinco Mas 16th of September and she mentioned, well, it's possible that we might stop that uh, streetcar for those two or three days, whatever it is, on the fiestas. And so I'm bringing that up and hopefully that can happen so we don't lose that tradition, okay? Uh, we want to continue the, the Latino influence downtown. We don't want to be lost. Uh, a lot of us are concerned that we may be losing that. Uh, we can see what's happened in certain parts of the 4th Street that's already happened. We don't want that to continue. We also see it in development. Yeah, if I recall, those units are going to be built on Santiago Street. Uh, uh, people were protesting because it appears to be low-end type of people moving in there. Of course, we all feel like we're low-enders. I'm a low-ender. I'm from the Logan neighborhood. So we don't want to lose those traditions. We, don't, we want to be considered that we stay around and continue those fiestas and not lose, not lose none of that. I thank you. I thank you, Sam. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for all your work as well, Sam, in the community. You've been working here for many, many, many years, and thank you for what you do. Uh, Madeline, followed by Cynthia Perez, followed by Kathy Tran. If Madeline is not here, let's go to Cynthia. Cynthia, are you here? Followed by Kathy. Cynthia, you're coming down? Okay, and then Kathy Tran, and then Manuel Guerrero. Please go ahead, Cynthia. Two minutes, go ahead, please. Okay. My name is Cynthia Perez. I've been here for the past month. I am a resident of Santa Ana. I live in Santa Anita area of Ward 5 for Roman Reina. I'm here to talk about the transit vision. In relation to that, the gang injunction, the lack of inclusion of the community in the planning process, and the culture and sensitivity from everybody that is not doing anything to make sure that everybody is included. Gang injunctions I bring up. Gang injunctions bring up uh, the fact that we it takes away due it takes away the due process of law for individuals that are in this gang injunction destroys the ability to meet organize to take care of community issues our neighbors are not allowed to meet for any reason otherwise they are labeled as affiliated with gangs gang junctions are also usually found to be placed in areas of desirable real estate like the Willowick golf course I bring this up again, going into the transparency of this whole project. It has been shown that the city, in, decide, in deciding on its preferred option for the fixed sky rate project, has given no need, no need for the fact that La Calle Cuatro is a street that has residents that join together for historical and celebrations for, for everything that a culture stands by. I don't need to read a paper to tell you that this affects a culture. We celebrate Dia de los Niños, which is a day that we honor our children and the future. A day for Dia de los Muertos, where we celebrate the lives of our lost ones through death. And as well, Las Fiestas Patrias, which by the way, Mayor, I would suggest you would look over here and acknowledge the fact that you come from a culture that has strong people you should acknowledge all cultures. And with this transit going through the 4th Street, it does not commemorate any of our culture. I'm not excluding anybody. If anything, I hope everybody coming to Santana understands that there's been culture here, that there's been art, that there's, there's been movements happening. But it always gets oppressed. Thank you, Cynthia. And I honestly, on behalf of Santana, Hardly anybody knows about this project. I, I suggest you get on this. It's not just for history. It's not just for art. It's for our future. You're displacing individuals. Thank you. It's just sad. Thank you. Kathy? It's sad. Kathy followed by Manuel Guerrero.
Hello, good evening council members and staff. My name is Kathy Tran and I currently live in council members Dinajero's Ward 6 in Windsor Village. Even though I'm a um, second year at UC Berkeley right now, I consider Santa Ana my home for the past 19 years. Um, I stand here today to shed light on some of the harmful effects of the Harbor Corridor Plan in conjunction with the Santa Ana Fixed Guideway Project. So some of the most immediate negative impacts that I see on the human environment around this project is the destruction of existing homes and businesses. In the long run, these projects will have harmful effects which include the excess noise, air pollution, and potential loss of living quality. Not only are humans being affected, but the wildlife and plants also suffer along when their habitats are being destroyed by excess pollution. According to the Commission of Human Rights, and I quote, the practice of forced eviction constitutes a gross violation of human rights, in particular to the right of adequate housing. With these two projects, I know that you are displacing the right of adequate housing. Forced evictions intensify inequality, marginalization, and social conflicts, and their harmful impacts go beyond material losses. Being the first in my family to leave for college, um, for the first time out of Santa Ana also means that I have a greater responsibility to come back to Santa Ana and take care of my family. Their American dream was to send me to college, but I also want to ensure that after getting my undergrad degree, I can come back to the community I love and support the community that I grew up in. Um, today I stand before you to speak about the harmful effects of these potential product projects in conjunction with the Harbor Corridor Plan and the Fixed Guideway Project, and I challenge and question you all to mitigate these harmful effects. Thank you. David, um, well, Manuel Guerrero, followed by uh, uh, David uh, Villanueva. Manuel, are you here? If not, who is Mad Madeline? Are you back? Yes, I am. Come on down. I called you earlier. And then after that, uh, Manuel, if you're here, and then David Villanueva, and then Laura Perez. Good evening, council and staff. Um, I'm going to speak about something that is an underlying problem in this city that I believe needs to take, be taken care of. The continual battle in this city, undermining and dividing it into binary mode, can basically be understood as a race war. The clash between races runs through our city from top to bottom and is a mechanism maintaining a gross form of social warfare among our people. Basic elements aiding its continuation are ethnic differences, differences between languages, different degrees of force, energy, and violence used by the city and retaliated against by its people, and the differences between equitable and inequitable economic policy and policy practices with land use, allowing our city to maintain barbaric practices which continue to subjugate one race or class of people over another. Some examples to make this statement plain are these. It has been shown in the Burns report that SAPD, juvenile justice, probation, and our courts are some of the most racially discriminatory in the state and for years have disproportionately hurt families and men and women of color in this city. It has been demonstrated that the city will recontract pricing with the federal government on the heads of immigrants detained by ICE and then rather than using these funds to pay off the debt on the jail, they'll use it to sponsor other activities at the whim of council, knowing that these funds keep the city fiscally tied to maintaining these inhumane practices. It is recognized that each time the city allocates money, such as the recent allocation to PD to crack down on dispensaries, on the other hand, cuts will be made, be made in the same department where it hurts community most. This past week, they cut 10 of our union janitors to replace them with non-union workers in the police department. It has been shown that the city is comfortable with minimal outreach, comfortable with its emailing list of 3,000 in a city of 300,000, and considers this 3,000 an informed populace. It has been demonstrated time and again that the city has no qualms in leveling hundreds of acres of land without sufficiently working to mitigate the harm for those families and businesses in the development area that will most assuredly be affected. Changes being made include the Downtown District, Harbor Corridor Plan, Santa Ana Transit Vision, Washington Avenue widening, Warner Avenue widening, Grand and Bristol Street, already causing amounts of harm via displacement of both businesses and residents. This city needs to take on the medical dictum, first do no harm, realizing that projects of urban renewal and redevelopment can either be the life or death of a city, depending on how carefully, kindly, or intellectually, honestly, it's being done. Santa Ana continues outdated and immoral practices of sorting its residents by race and class, and does little to create mixed-use strategies throughout the city. 
Examples of these are the Met, the Mark, the Station District, and the Santiago Depot project. The tax dollars that come into this community belong to all that live here and all who are being left behind and constrained by the sieve of all the above stated forms of discrimination. Segregation holds us back. It takes our money to build a community that we cannot be a part of, a community that we can Thank serve, you, but cannot be served by, a community whose wealth we can help Thank to you. build up, but whose benefits in good schools and choice opportunities Thank we cannot enjoy. Thank you. Let enjoy. me go ahead and call on David Villanueva, please. I am here to bear witness by and to speak up for the stopping of these David. patterns in the city of Santa Ana. David. And then followed by Laura Perez and then Alan Lawson. Good evening, council and staff of Santa Ana. My name is David Villanueva. I am a high school graduate of Los Amigos and I am a current student of Fullerton College. I came back to Santa Ana because I've heard that some I won't name who, decided to, it was a great idea to make a transit system across the houses of the city, across the small businesses that are already here, to make way for uh, an Orange County, um, to make Santa Ana the small district of Orange County, and Orange County itself to make the small district of um, Los Angeles. Um, I, can, I come here today to talk about the project cost. Um, while the mayor that states that it will create a thriving economy, lighter traffic, and happy communities, at what cost will this come to the city, the state, the region, and the residents? There is an estimated cost of 238 million for this project. 238 million that we do not have because California is already in debt. Do you need a student like me, 21 years old, to tell you that this is a bad idea? 238 million that we don't have. However, the actual report is that it will cost $400 million to make the stupid transit across the houses and small business in the area that we have already. Um, 650,000 a year out of, 650,000 a year out of um, residents, taxpayers' money to make this, while the rest of, of the M2 funds will be paying the rest. I don't think that's justifiable. 650000 out of my own pocket to make this um, small project that we, we can't even, why, why, is it, why are we doing this? This does not sound physically, uh, fiscally responsible because California is already trillions of dollars in debt. They don't need money that we don't have, basically, and for, these tra uh, for these transportation projects. Um, <coughs> It is my hope that the city would reconsider doing this, um, as well as taking consideration for the health and public safety of the res residents of Santa Ana. Thank you. Thank you, Laura Perez, followed by Alan Dawson, followed by Giad Salomon. Manuel, I called you earlier. Go ahead, come on up. And then after you, Laura Perez, and then Alan Lawson. Good evening, everyone. I'm a resident of Santa Ana. Born and raised. Um, I want to start with a statement by Noam Chomsky, a professor of linguistics at MIT, activist and writer, and considered one of the greatest living intellectuals of our time, that we live entangled in webs of endless deceit, that we live in a highly indoctrinated society where elementary truths are easily buried. Elementary truths such as the fact we invaded Iraq for oil and strategic placing of military bases in the Middle East. Elementary truths such as the fact that we stand in the way of arms and nuclear disarmament and the fact that the, mil the military industrial complex serves corporate interests. All these facts that we face, we simply don't address. Um, we live in a free country where I'm able to talk right now and the police aren't going to stop me from doing what I'm saying right now or anything remotely like that. On the other hand, there are strategic methods devised to prevent us from making use of those freedoms. Um, for a single isolated individual, in Santa Ana especially, it is, it's uh, to participate in a meaningful way in the political system is almost impossible. It takes access to information, access to independent media, organizations, 
And that's not being done here. As stated by LA Times, real quick, the LA Times and the Federal Bureau, there's a grand jury investigation basically into your property swap with an auto parts dealer that uh, you voted for him to get exclusive contracts, you gave him property. And uh, there's also an investigation into uh, Michelle Martinez, uh, your uh, alleged bribery case where you received money from your, uh, from a certain, uh, for your campaign that you did not claim. And uh, also it's under investigation for money received that says that you did not report the payments for a complex apartment in the council. Sorry, I ran over here, I'm running out of breath. You're Basically what I'm here to say is, that the objective is clear what you guys are doing with the city of Santa Ana. I mean, anybody with any similar kind of intelligence can tell what you guys are doing and how you guys are allocating funds. And it's time for Santa Ana, whoever's watching this, to wake up. I mean, how long are we going to stand around and let this kind of thing go on? And it's time that we inform ourselves because you guys do not want the population involved in what you guys are doing. But as the grand jury has just stated recently, you guys better get ready for change. And this kind, this kind of just you. lacks a lot of oversight. Thank you. It's pretty sad, bro. Thank you. It's pretty Thank sad. you. Laura People Perez. are going to storm in here mad one day. Laura They're going to storm in here please. mad. And you guys are in trouble. Laura okay. followed by Alan Dawson. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, I, I'm really proud of these kids. Very really proud. Um, Mayor Polito, before we proceed with this. I hope you're not timekeeper because I've noticed in the last five presenters that have stood here, you've done nothing but look down. I'm hoping you're not looking at a stopwatch. What are you looking at? Please continue. What are you looking at? Please answer me. Can you answer? I'm looking at you. Please continue. What were you looking at? Your phone? Probably not, right? Thank you. Thanks. Um, Michelle Martinez, I've had the chance to meet you before, and I appreciate you actually giving these young students and young individuals the attention that they deserve. Unlike Mayor Polito, who wasn't even giving them eye contact or acknowledgement, but I appreciate it. I'll make this short. Um, I've been a Santa Ana resident for 30 years, and I live in Santa Anita. Um, I'm a product and I'm testimony that not everyone is someone who's affiliated with crime. And there's change, there's a lot of change. And up until a week ago, I found out that, is it 50, 25 feet in front of my house, you guys plan to beautify Harbor Boulevard. No one's been notified at all. I've never seen you walk into my neighborhood to introduce yourself, to thank us for putting you in the spot that you're in. Never. 80% of the neighborhood and the, uh, the neighbors in my surrounding that I've known for 30 years have been residents for 42 years. They're about to be replaced and displaced and have not been given any type of information that you guys plan to do a transit way. I'm over here, sir. No, no, but I just want you to meet with the city manager because I think your information is incorrect. We're not moving a single person, and yet you're alleging that people are going to be displaced. Can you meet with the city manager course, on that? he gives me the time, of course. And I also want to he invite... Will, he will. I, will, I want to invite And I'd be you, happy to meet with you as well. I want to invite you personally to my neighborhood to walk the streets and walk the transit line that you guys plan to build. Let's go for a bike ride, honestly. See if it's safe. We'll, we'll go out there. What I'm telling you is nobody is going to be displaced. Please take my phone number. You can got you, it. You, Thank you, you, Laura. Can you put it down in your it's cell phone? Right, it's right. Are you on uh, Figueroa or where? I'm on 705 North Figueroa. Just give it to the clerk because you didn't put your number on here. Okay. Give because I didn't her. get a chance to fill it out. But please. Thank you. Well, you, you somebody have, filled it out. You, you have your phone in front of you. Can you somebody please enter my phone out. number? No. No, just please. give it to the clerk. Um, please. La uh, Alan Lawson followed by Jihad Solomon. Michelle, please contact me. Mayor, expect a call tomorrow. Thank you. Alan Lawson. Mayor, if, if yes. I could, because I think it's important uh, for other speakers. The um, 
proposed uh, local preferred alternative is a streetcar system that's in the public right of way and it's actually going to be built in the street and there'll be no houses taken there's well, not a single resident a that's single going to move out of anything that's correct well if you can please uh, uh you know let's contact laura perez again tomorrow and because and there's a misunderstanding here please go ahead alan dawson thank you <laughs> good evening uh, mayor thank Polito you. and city council uh, i'm alan lawson and i'm here tonight speaking on behalf of the santa Ana historical preservation society and uh, in regard to the fixed guideway project. Uh, SAHPS supports uh, Streetcar Alternative 1. We believe it will promote more visitors to downtown Santa Ana and reduce current vehicle and parking demands on the existing street system at a more effective cost than Streetcar Alternative 2. Thank you very much for the opportunity to comment. Thank you for your comment, uh, Alan. Gilad <laughs> Solomon, followed by Ryan Chase. Hi, good evening. My name is Gilad Salmon. I'm a resident of Santa Ana. I live right next to Santa Ana High School. Um, and as a one-car household, first off, I just want to say thank you that we're having this discussion about transportation because it's very, very important. Um, I have some concerns about the streetcar, primarily with its use of the uh, Pacific Electric right-of-way and that uh, similar systems in other cities like San Jose and, and other cities have very low ridership. Uh, having said that, if we do move forward with a streetcar alternative, uh, I, I urge you to strongly consider the route uh, following 5th Street. As people have mentioned before, 4th Street is used for city events. We don't want to spend a quarter million dollars on a project to then halt service a couple of times a year for events. We want to keep that open for events. You know, I work on 4th Street. I walk that every day from my home to 4th Street. And there are a lot of people there. There are a lot of families with children there. There are a lot of people who are backing in and out of those parking spots. And if we've got a, a streetcar running down that street with all the activity that's already going on, I'm just worried about that being a recipe for disaster. So I hope you, you really consider Fifth Street. Um, the other thing is that the um, impact on local businesses on Fourth Street would be detrimental as this is building out. So again, if you do consider the streetcar alternative, I really hope that you, you consider the Fifth Street alternative um, and, and you know, keep Fourth Street open for events and keep Fourth Street businesses happy in our community. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jill. Ryan Chase, followed by uh, Jeffrey uh, Hall. Mr. Mayor, Council, Staff, City Manager. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the fixed guideway system. In my humble opinion, there is not much to say other than this is the biggest opportunity and no-brainer for the city in a long time. We, Santa Ana, have an opportunity to be on the forefront of mass transit for much-needed Orange County. The fixed guideway system will bring a large amount of people and attention to the area, create a multitude of employment opportunities, and create a huge amount of additional investment. I am personally in favor of a four-street alignment because it is the best way to showcase the heart of downtown, rather than utilizing a secondary street. I am also in favor of doing whatever is feasibly possible to make the selected street more pedestrian and bike friendly. Please support this project and let us get this moving forward as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for all the good work that your family does here in the city day in and day out. Jeffrey uh, Hall followed by Mike uh, Wiseman. Hi there. Exciting night. Um, my name is Jeffrey Hall. I'm here representing the Downtown Santa Ana Restaurant Association, uh, as well as my other businesses in town. Uh, I know for me, four years ago, uh, when I finally had the pleasure to come to downtown and experience uh, what this town had to offer, uh, it got me. And it got me like a lot of other people. And anything that's going to bring that kind of uh, experience to more people, uh, I cherish. And I hopefully support in, in any way possible. Um, you know, Orange County exists because of Santa Ana. And it's something that's to bring a green uh, solution uh, to mass transit through climate change and all the other problems that we're dealing with nowadays to find something like this to help get people around low income, high income, all the above, to bring them through our city, to our city. I uh, just, I don't see any other uh, positive way uh, we can move forward. So, uh, strongly in support. And Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, uh, Jeff. 
Mike uh, Wiseman and John Godhold. And is Mandy coming down too, or has she sent her two uh, best guys here? She's working. She's working. Got it. Please go ahead, Mike. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, staff, and our new city manager, welcome. Uh, Mike Weisman, uh, one of the partners at DGWB Advertising. Um, 2000 is when we made an investment in the downtown in the old city hall building. Um, I had been a resident of South County until, uh, until our building was, uh, was occupied by the agency. I'm now a, a proud uh, resident of Santa Ana. And one of the things that uh, occurred to me is that uh, we have a staff of 70 people, um, none of which uh, live in Santa Ana at this point. Um, but having come down to the downtown, I know from being in other cities across the country that there's no uh, city that makes it without a vital downtown area. And uh, so I'm here to speak in support of this project. Um, I learned something very fascinating in, in uh, my now 14 years in downtown, living and, and working downtown, is the amazing diversity. And we're seeing it represented tonight. Uh, the, the story of Santa Ana is a story that I realize needs to be told. Uh, people need to understand uh, the diversity, the amazing um, cultural uh, mosaic that's that's just uh, knitted before us every day. Uh, I'm a, I, I now am walking from work to restaurants uh, to shops. Um, my people that are working in the agency have an opportunity to live down in Santa Ana. There is now some affordable housing for the people that are working in the agency. This streetcar project will showcase, as we've heard already. Um, what's going on in Santa Ana, the wonderful story that is Santa Ana. For other residents of Orange County, I have friends in, in Los Angeles, I have friends in Santa Barbara, um, I have friends in San Diego. Uh, they're jealous of what's going on down here. And it's not because I'm here, it's because of what came before me and what is still here and what I hope that, that we would preserve. But this story needs to be told to a wider audience and I think that this project is a fantastic way to showcase what's here. So thank you, and I'm in support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. John Gothold, followed by uh, Ernie Medrano. Well, you've already heard about our company perspective on this. Um, I'm just here to lend my voice and support. I do, uh, like Mike, you know, one of the things in my involvement with the, with the arts movement downtown, uh, as we've talked about all the great things that are going on in Santa Ana, often it's the cities that are the closest to us that are the least aware of what's going on. So something like this that can make it really easy and convenient for our neighbors to come in and visit the downtown, I think can only be a benefit for, the, for everybody downtown, for all of our businesses, for all of our residents. So I'm fully in support of the project. It's very difficult to be first and to build the first leg of a public transportation system. It's, people say, well, where's it going to go? Well, it has to start somewhere. And what better place than here where all the great things in Orange County start? So you, ha you have my full support on this project. Thank you, John, and thank you for all the good work that you do. Uh, Ernie Ernesto Medrano, please, followed by Adolfo Lopez. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, staff. My name is Ernesto Medrano. I'm with Team Local 952 here in Orange County. We represent approximately nine, under 9,000 employees in the county. We have employees that work very hard day in and day out in the city of Santana. Whether they're delivering your Coca-Cola, your Pepsi, your Dr. Pepper Snapple, or whether they're UPS drivers doing delivery and all the packages you want to get before 10 a.m. Or as well as, as if it's the OCTA coach operators or the maintenance folks, we represent those folks. We represent approximately 2,000 employees involved in the transit sector, whether it's the OCTA employees or the access employees. We represent those folks proudly, and they work very hard in the city. We're extremely excited to see the developments that are happening in the city. I remember when you guys were talking about this in the, in the worst recession of the country. You guys were talking about this back then, and you didn't give up. You, 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 you stuck to it, and you saw it through, and it's really exciting to see that you're this close to getting it done. We need to take people out of their vehicles so we could, number one, provide for a greener environment, but also because as vested interests that we have in the jobs of our members, we need to get our goods to the market as best as possible because we don't want to lose any of these companies to go to other parts of the state 
or other states for that matter to be able to get their products out. We want to be able to have the flow of products to get out there so our members and many of them Santana residents could provide for that good living. Jobs that we have worked very hard through collective bargaining to provide for good wages, good benefits in the medical side as well as a good retirement plan. And so I want to stand here to support the Fixed Guideway project. With, I think that that provides an element for a world-class city here in Santana. And I urge you to vote in favor of that. And uh, I support that wholeheartedly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Medrano. If I could have Adolfo Lopez, please. Um. I'm here to support the project, uh, the streetcar system, because I think it's good for the downtown and the city. At the beginning, I kind of like, I don't like it. I don't want you to go. I don't want it to go to Fourth Street. And then I remember when we start doing the redevelopment, because I've been in Santa Ana and the downtown for the last 40 years, and I remember I didn't like the redevelopment because it was going to tear down the buildings, stuff like that. Then at the end, I know we're all going to suffer through all this at the beginning, but it's, I think it's going to put, and I know it's going to put Santana in the map. I'm here to support this project because we've been expecting for this to happen. This is a city, this is a city that everybody around here has the eyes on this city. We have a lot of diversity, and I've seen this project coming slowly but surely. And I personally want to take, thank Mr. Pulido because he took the lead on this thing long, long time ago. And I also want to support this council that came together to put it together in front of everybody so we can everybody speak whatever we want to say. And I really appreciate they let us talk and back to the same thing, I support this project. It's good for the city, and it's good for the whole downtown, too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adolfo. Uh, Sean Coolidge, followed by Peter Katz. And Sean, just take a half a moment and talk to us about what you're doing with the uh, farmer's market and all that. You are too kind. Thank you very much. I'm always looking for an opportunity to plug the downtown Santa Ana farmer's market. Um, it's a great opportunity. It happens every Thursday from 4 to 8 p.m. And uh, it's family friendly. A lot of good stuff. They accept uh, WIC, EBT. It's got the cold brew coffee. We've got fresh fruits and veggies. We have a wide variety of vendors. It's something cool to do, get you out of the house and you know, just enjoy this great weather we're having. Um, was that good enough? It was great. Cool. All right. It was great. <laughs> um, yeah, so I love Santa Ana. I've been here eight years. I live at the Santiago Street Lofts uh, along with several other, other of my neighbors who've been here about eight years. Uh, we moved here based upon, uh, a lot of us moved here because of the Centerline project, which was uh, much like the MAX in Portland, which is a rail service which brings you directly to the airport. and. Uh, Unfortunately, as we all know, that, that project didn't happen, but the, uh, the streetcar project that's proposed now, something that I myself and many of my neighbors are in support of, is a great idea. And I can speak personally because I grew up in uh, San Diego, um, Chargers fan, and I was able to see, you know, I was a bus rider, I took the trolley, I was, um, I'm one of those guys, I just, you know, I love public transportation, I'm sorry. And, uh, and even now, to this day, I take Amtrak down and go see my family. I'll take the, the trolleys down. I'll take the bus. And it's such a great system. But at that time, when you first set that up, people are like, where's this thing going? What's it going to do? And it's because as an adult now, I can see that a lot of people looked at it in terms of today. And yeah, going to Garden Grove today doesn't sound like a great idea. But San Diego, 25 years ago, you know, it kind of the same thing. Downtown San Diego is full of trannies and hookers and all that fun stuff that you don't want to do on a Friday night. And now it's, it's a thriving downtown. And if we get people to think just outside of what's happening now in these cities, you know, uh, adjacent cities, Anaheim, Santa Ana, Garden Grove, you know, 20 years from now, we're going to have a great, great system. And people are going to say, like, that was a, that was good thinking. You know, some, some people had some, they had the chutzpah, they, they, they understood that there was the community concern, but ultimately there was the greater vision and the legacy of Santa Ana, which we'll leave ahead. So hopefully I'm still around for that when that happens. Um, and I advise a lot of people who are against this, uh, take a trip to San Diego, Portland, 
Seattle, San Francisco, Denver, anywhere that has a system like this set up, and it's pretty kick-ass. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. SantaFarmersMarket.com. Thank you. Uh, you ought to have a radio show or something, Sean. That was good. Uh, Peter Katz, followed by uh, Darren Shippen, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, residents. First, I want to thank a couple people and correct some misnomers that I heard here tonight. There was some great public outreach. Mr. David Cavazos, our city manager, created some awesome outreach programs where the community was well represented out there. Our media spokesman, Tanya, did a good job of getting it out on the internet and in the newspapers, and on, I even heard it on KNX talk about it. So for people to say they didn't know about this project, um, dumbfounded. We go to school today, and what are we learning in our classrooms? Um, we heard earlier tonight about dreams. What are dreams made of? Well, dreams are visions, and dreams build great ideas. And if you go around the cities of the world, and I have traveled around the world, and you look at some of the great transportation systems, none of them have been torn down. New York, Chicago, Washington, New Orleans, Boston, Portland, San Francisco, San Diego, Amsterdam, London, Paris, Rome, Berlin, Mexico City, Rio, Toronto, Tokyo, Singapore, Beijing, it goes on and look at Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Long Beach started out as a navy town, a seedy town, and they put in the blue line. It changed the whole complexity of people, children, business. It was so successful that Los Angeles jumped on the bandwagon with the red line, the gold line, the green line, the line to the sea, and now the line to the, to the airport. Uh, they wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't successful. And it does not ethnic cleanse. It connects communities. You look at the great new events that are developing in Tokyo, in Chinatown, in some of these areas, and whole new festivals are springing up around these transportation modes. And what does great transportation do? It makes great cities. Santa Ana is the third densest city in the United States. Only New York and Chicago are denser. Um, it's the largest city of its size without a public uh, rapid transit train system. So it's an asset that's well worth investing in. And it is the missing piece for this city. And what does it do? It increases crosstown mobility. It increases property values along the route. It increases business and sales tax revenues along these routes. It provides advertising revenues for the city and businesses in the city to advertise in these trains and in these stations. And it produces local jobs, maintenance, construction, operation, tourism. Uh, there is no downsize on this. It brings more visitors to the Bowers, to the zoo, uh, to the downtown area. So to say that you're against a project like this, just look at, look at the vision of it, what it's going to do to the city. It's going to make Santa Ana one of the great, great cities of Orange County and the hub of the county. So I say build it. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Darren and then uh, Dave Hohen and then uh, Manny Pena. Welcome, Darren. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for having the opportunity to speak. I'm in, totally in favor of this rail project. Uh, I was reminded of it. I, w I went to Calacas the other day, and everyone should visit Calacas, the reinvigorated Calacas, a wonderful place. And as I was having my coffee on 4th and Broadway, I looked in the Starbucks window, <laughs> and I noticed uh, the pictures from 1912, 1930s, and 40s, and you can see the rail line from the red car. And there were families in the street and businesses and total operation. In fact, World War II, I think, was even happening. And for all that period of time, this same, this same route is going to be revitalized and reused. So it's, it's not something new. It's, it's something reinvigorated, something smart, something that takes people out of their cars. And I'd love to get out of my car instead of driving hours to the airport. And my job t makes me travel everywhere. And I get an opportunity to see Salt Lake or Beale Street in Memphis or Denver and see see what transportation can do for people. People that can't afford to have a car or don't have a driver's license can get on this trolley. And I, I just would like you to support it. Uh, and I'm going to plug the, uh, the Gay Pride Festival, which is going to be held on 4th Street. And uh, some other people mentioned that they couldn't have their festivals on 4th Street. Well, we have a festival as well. And we'll move it to 3rd Street or 5th Street. Or if you put it on the 5th Street, then we'll stay on 4th Street. But we're just in support of it. I'm in support of it. And thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. Dave, uh, followed by Manny, followed by uh, Ana Urusu. 
Good evening, Council. My name is Dave Hohen. I am a 30-year resident of Santa Ana. And uh, as Darren said, um, we used to have a, a, a rail system right through Santa Ana. And um, in our infinite wisdom of cars and automobiles and 29 cent uh, a gallon gas and, and not caring about pollution, we did away with those. And here we are with very expensive gas nowadays. And, um, and fossil fuel that's eventually going to run out and um, I think this light rail system is perfect for for what we need to do in the future and thank God Santa Ana has the vision to do that and I hope we can just get on with it as far as the fourth or the fifth street um, I too am um, interested in that all of these festivals where por par portions of the streets are closed that somehow or other that's taken into account and whether it's moved to another street or whatever, uh, let's get on with this uh, project and, and I support you in that. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Manny, followed by Anna. Good evening, Mayor and City Council people. I've been told I don't know how many times by our uh, beloved uh, city manager not to talk negative. So today I'm going to try to be as positive as possible. Did he convince you? No, he didn't convince me, but I'm going to try. As <laughs> I, for one, also support the transit. I think it's a great idea. I'm a little concerned because there's been a lot of talk about what it may or may not do. And, of course, there's always the negative and there's always the positive. I think it's going to be a good idea. I think we're ready for it. But I think we need to be a little bit uh, uh, concerned that uh, some of those people who are quite worried about it... Um, uh, can come aboard. I think that we can do it with them a lot easier than without them. I am concerned of some of the things that have been established here for many, many years, and I think that uh, it's going to bring good, but I'm hoping that uh, our city manager and his wise decisions, and I'm being positive, uh, can guide us, not some of us, not most of us, but all of us, in a direction that's going to pay off big time in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. Anna. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, and City Manager of the City of Santa Ana. Uh, as is good practice for any and all of us doing work for the common good, we must begin by recognizing our accomplishments. The report you have produced for the Santa Fixed Guideway is a well-written comprehensive report that does provide necessary background information for those who have participated and those who are newly informed of the matter. You did in fact implement outreach strategies in accordance to the Sunshine Ordinance to ensure transparency and improve participation of all Santana residents. The postcards available in multiple languages that reach tenants as well as homeowners, the publication in various news outlets and the city's website community uh, outreach meetings at accessible times and locations, all uh, were evidence of the due diligence of our governing body that wants the public informed and involved. Nonetheless, civic participation, especially with a majority working class immigrant population, is not an easy task. An environmental impact review is a difficult document to understand, and even with enough notification, it is the committed engagement that allows folks to understand and more fully participate in the process. This is why it is imperative that you are open and receptive to input, even at these final stages of the participation. Even at these final stages, you have the opportunity to provide recommendations to mitigate and address some of the concerns. Concerns such as the unintended consequences of development, not direct displacement, but a hike in property values and cost of living that does drive people out. Uh, it is a complex matter, but a good endeavor to take on economic development projects. While we do this, we need to anticipate to have a comprehensive approach that will not, uh, for development where existing residents will not continue to be at risk for displacement. Santa Ana Building Healthy Communities extends an invitation uh, to partner uh, on this endeavor with a new vision for community development in this fixed guideway project and other current and future land use and economic development projects. Building on research of best practices, policy findings and recommendations in cities of similar demographics, we believe that the principles guiding community development ought to include the following. Centralize the stability of working class residents who reside in the communities and 
who reside in, the, in, in, our, in our communities, support community organizing and involve residents in making the decisions that impact their neighborhoods, promote and measure positive human development outcomes in addition to economic indicators, acknowledge and support the importance of racial equity, community, and culture as parts of a healthy community. We look forward to continue working together to ensure more equitable opportunities for a healthy Santa Ana. Uh, please feel free to, to reach us and to, reach, to continue to reach Santa Ana Building Healthy Communities um, in these complex endeavors and to make sure that there is enough participation, involvement, and inclusion throughout this process. Thank you. Uh, Desi Reyes. Good evening, Council Members, uh, Mayor. Uh, Desi Reyes lived here in Santa Ana for a long time. Wanted to speak in, in favor of the street cart. Um, and also of alternative to number two. <clears throat> I think that by going, is it Fifth Street, I think? Fifth Street, it'll revitalize that area. Uh, zoning will be changed in that area and bring new businesses into, down, into the area. And also to go by Eddie West Stadium, which will allow more organizations to make use of that stadium. And at the same time, bring more ridership into that area and also for the jurors that are, are coming into um, Civic Center uh, the juror parking is right near there so <coughs> it'll increase ridership in the long run which will upset, offset the operation expenses that will increase through the years uh, Ford Street is already there business is already established um, I think alternative to although it is more expensive now, it'll be an asset, a good investment in the long term because it'll make Fifth Street um, bring new businesses into the area. Again, revitalize that area, zone change that area. So um, I definitely support it, and that's the alternative that I like to see you guys consider. Although it is more expensive right now, in the long run, I think it'll be it'll pay off overall. Thank you. Thank you, Desi. Also, thank you for being a, a neighborhood, a leader in your neighborhood and all the work that you do, Desi. Thank you. So with that, there are no more uh, comment for this. It was not a public hearing, but we just allowed uh, a testimony anyways. And what I would now like to do is to have staff make a, a presentation. We can answer any questions we may have, and then we'll bring it uh, back uh, uh, for a vote uh, by the city council. Yes, we have more. Another speaker. Come on up and speak. Then I didn't get a card. Just go ahead, please. No worries. Go ahead. My name is Tina Hingarani, and I am here representing General Services Administration, which is a division of the federal government. GSA's preferred alternative is Streetcar Alternative Number One, where the streetcar runs on Fourth Street and Santa Ana Boulevard. Alternative Two is highly undesirable to GSA and our attendant agencies, just from a security standpoint. So, thank you. That was to the point. Tell your folks that you made a good point, by the way. Thank you. So with that, let's continue with the staff uh, presentation. Thank you, uh, Mayor, uh, Member of the City Council. We do have a, a presentation, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started. Uh, as was emphasized, uh, Santa Ana is the highest density city in the United States without a fixed guideway system. Uh, right between Boston and Chicago, so we are definitely a good match for a streetcar system. The fixed uh, next slide. The fixed guideway uh, corridor uh, obviously will relieve congestion. Uh, will connect uh, Santa Ana to the region, create enhanced access and opportunity for all of our residents and and visitors and employees. It will definitely stimulate economic development. And I also will say that it will uh, coexist with festivals and events, uh, having come from a, a city with uh, uh, Super Bowls and NBA uh, All-Star Games and uh, major events like marathons. We had no problem uh, working with the uh, light rail uh, system. We also um, have a strategic plan, and I want to emphasize that the strategic plan uh, is in alignment with the uh, streetcar uh, uh, local preferred alternative that we're discussing today. Uh, it has three different goals, community facilities and infrastructure, uh, establish uh, economic development opportunities, 
and also uh, continue to pursue objectives that shape downtown Santa Ana into a thriving, culturally diverse shopping, dining, and entertainment uh, destination. We've been working on this for a long time. It started in 2006, uh, which was Measure M, which is a local sales tax for transportation that was voted on by the public. Uh, OCTA, uh, Orange County Transportation Authority, uh, sponsored a Go Local Feasibility Study Program. Uh, Santa Ana was one of the finalists. Uh, we began our alternative analysis, environmental review in 2009. And in 2012, uh, the alternatives uh, were identified, streetcar one, streetcar two, and also a, a bus uh, transportation system. We want everybody to know that the study area that was uh, is, is being described included a public process. Uh, Santa Ana uh, Council Transportation Committee provided guidance on the transit vision uh, in 2007, in May, July, August, September, November. We had study sessions at the City Council meeting in October of 2007. Garden Grove, our partner, uh, approved the partnership with the City of Santa Ana in January of 2008 and the City uh, of Santa Ana Council approved the Go Local Project Concept Step 1, March 2008, and also uh, Orange County Transportation Authority Board approved the Go Local Step 1 screening results and Step 2 recommendations in May of 2008. The study area is described uh, in great detail here. The boundary is 17th Street, Westminster Avenue on the north, 1st Street on the south, Grand Avenue on the east, in Harbor Boulevard on the west. The length is about 4.1 miles. Why was this study area selected? Uh, it was uh, based on the regional access between Santa Ana Regional Transportation Center um, and the Employment Center Activity Centers of downtown Santa Ana and other areas in Santa Ana, uh, such as the Garden Grove Regional Transit Connection, the Civic Center, downtown commercial district, and it provides opportunity to connect with regional transportation system, including OCTA's bus rapid transit program and the planned Metrolink uh, service expansions. And also it took into consideration future development and redevelopment opportunities. Again, I'm sorry. Um, it's uh, out of order. The public uh, process, uh, Mayor, thank you, and City Council, on page nine of the presentation, uh, began with uh, a first phase where six alternatives, uh, uh, three streetcar options and three bus options were narrowed down to three alternatives we described today. We did have stakeholder meetings in January of 2010, and we had the definition of alternatives in February of 2010. Then we had initial screening with four scoping meetings in June of 2010, another stakeholder meeting, and then we had a phase three evaluation and draft environmental impact report, uh, which looked at the alternative analysis and the uh, environmental assessment in May through July of 2014. We had public meetings throughout the month during the 45 day review period, different times, different days, well, well attended. And again, today we're asking for a direction from the council on a local preferred alternative. Streetcar alternative one serves the greatest number of transit dependent households, has the highest daily ridership, has the lowest O&M cost, and, and has existing land use that best supports transit, like uh, 4th Street alignment. It does have some impact on, on parking on 4th Street and Santa Ana Boulevard. Streetcar Alternative 2 uh, does have uh, proximate access to uh, civic center destinations, but does have some challenges, as mentioned by the Government's uh, Service Association. It's a longer route, it's more expensive, and will have a greater uh, right-of-way impact, especially in the Bristol Street uh, area where the narrows uh, at, the, at the street level. The bus rapid transit uh, option was, was identified. Uh, it has uh, an initial lower capital cost, but overall it's actually more expensive. Uh, and uh, it does have uh, very little uh, adverse impact in the environment, obviously, because the system is uh, at, uh, currently operating. But it does have the lowest daily ridership. It has less passenger carrying capacity. Uh, it's less predictable and has very little economic development uh, benefit. On page 13, uh, I want everyone to emphasize that the Federal Transit Administration does have a requirement for the public review process. We met those requirements. Uh, it includes a notice in the newspaper, 
a 45-day comment period, a community meeting, and that we notify uh, individuals within 500 feet of the surrounding area. We actually greatly exceeded the requirements. Uh, we did additional outreach. We had seven news articles written, three community meetings. We had personalized mailings to the stakeholders, business owners, neighborhood associations, schools, residents. We sent out nearly 4,000 notices to the residents in three different languages. We had interpretation services at all of the events and uh, the outreach efforts. We had court reporting services. We created a project website. We had copies available at seven different locations. And we provided notices at every Santa Ana Community Center. In addition to that, uh, we had press releases and we announced it at uh, various meetings. Uh, we had the information placed prominently on our website. Uh, we had 100,000 views uh, in the first 30 days of the 45-day uh, review period, 100,000 views. We had uh, staff contact key stakeholders, and we uh, also sent an alert to almost 2,000 uh, neighborhood leaders. And we also had handouts at meetings throughout the 45-day review period, and we also provided information to other information officers, such as the Santa Ana Unified School District. We did receive public comments uh, at the first meeting from six individuals, at the second meeting from four individuals, at the third meeting from 24 individuals. We also received four postcards, and we also received emails uh, from uh, four organizations and five uh, community groups, including today's comments at, at this meeting. Our staff uh, uh, recommendation and our consultant recommendation uh, and the criteria we used to make that recommendation it did include the community input, the environmental review results, and the technical criteria, uh, that is, uh, transit-dependent households that would be served, transit supportiveness of the land uses served, economic development potential along the route, additional right-of-way that would be required, travel times to key destinations, the number of riders, the ease of construction, and, of course, the cost. The recommended route uh, is, um, is displayed. It's the uh, four Street uh, Alignment, Streetcar Alternative 1. We uh, want you uh, to know that there is strong community support for a streetcar system as opposed to a bus system option. Streetcar Alternative 1 has the highest daily ridership, uh, 6,100 people versus Streetcar 2, which 4,700. So you can see the ridership would be highest. It serves the greatest number of transit-dependent households. And it also has a very active business district, uh, which would uh, support uh, the streetcar uh, environment. Uh, compared to Alternative 2, it has the least right-of-way acquisition. It's a lower cost. It has a greater ease of construction. And it has, uh, of course, a large uh, economic development potential. Parking has been uh, an area of, of, of concern. Bicycle access is an area of concern. Uh, we do want everyone to know that uh, with the uh, streetcar, on streetcar Alternative 1, you could have parking on both sides. Uh, we could reconfigure to parallel parking on the south side. We also could have an option to accommodate the bicycle track. And we could also uh, include, of course, pedestrian am amenities and la uh, larger sidewalks to encourage uh, walking. On the next uh, page is a diagram, a visual of a parking and bicycle access option. Uh, you can have uh, a bicycle track with uh, two-way traffic. You can extend the sidewalk. And of course, this would uh, be uh, uh, with uh, parallel parking. Uh, that would be uh, available as an option for the council to review and discuss. On page 23, we do believe there are significant advantages to the 4th Street alignment. You can see the picture there. Uh, this is definitely a streetcar revival. There was a streetcar, the red line on 4th Street many years ago, I believe in the 40s and 50s. It supports an active uh, high-capacity transit corridor. It would have increased visual exposure and access for 4th Street businesses. It would be in the heart of downtown Santa Ana, the heart of Orange County. We could uh, widen the sidewalks on the south side to foster pedestrian street-level activities. Uh, we would have fewer utility consequences with the 4th Street uh, option, and we would have uh, better predictability for transit because the streetcar would provide uh, pickups and drop-offs every uh, 10 minutes during peak hours and 15 minutes off-peak. I do want to emphasize that uh, this construction would be in the public right-of-way. We do not uh, displace any residents. Actually, uh, this would encourage transit-oriented development, which is compatible with increased residential development along the uh, streetcar uh, corridor. Uh, this is uh, a construction project because it's in the right-of-way that does not uh, involve uh, heavy um, uh, utility uh, construction. 
uh, would uh, be done in two or three block segments, about two or three months. Uh, we could work very closely with the impacted businesses uh, related to the schedule. We could do things at night, the weekends. Uh, we could have liquidation clauses and also acceleration clauses. Uh, clauses. We would maintain pedestrian access uh, to the area, and we would do everything possible uh, to keep these businesses um, uh, vibrant. We also want to emphasize uh, that role of this, uh, Santa Ana and uh, a memorandum of understanding with OCTA, Orange County Transportation Authority. OCTA would be the lead agency as um, approved by the City Council. We are committed to a 10% operating cost once it's up and running net of the fare box. Uh, and I want to emphasize that uh, this would result in millions and millions of dollars in increased revenue uh, from sales, from construction, from property values that would more than offset, offset any contribution by the, by the City uh, of Santa Ana. And then once the uh, environmental impact uh, report is completed with no significant finding, OCTA has the expertise uh, for financial design, construction, and operation. In fact, uh, yesterday, uh, the Orange County Transportation Authority Executive Committee approved uh, that OCTA be the lead agency, that they negotiate and define roles and responsibilities of the cities, that they pursue federal uh, New START funding for the project, approve the use of Measure M2 project revenues to, uh, to fund operations and maintenance of future projects and prepare an RFP for project management. So we have a real partner in Orange County Transportation Authority. We also want everyone to realize that the next steps for the EA environmental assessment, environmental impact uh, report, certification uh, after a decision is made with an LPA would be to prepare all the responses that we received. We didn't receive a lot, but we're working on that for the Federal Transportation Administration to review, and that we would come back uh, for certification with the City Council uh, this October with the understanding that once we receive approval of no significant finding, that the EA uh, would be a portion under the NEPA, NEPA requirements and mark the conclusion of the environmental uh, impact uh, process. I do have, uh, Mayor, the final uh, slide. Next steps. Uh, today, of course, City Council uh, makes a decision on the LPA. OCTA is scheduled to consider implementation plan and financing on August 11th, uh, which is actually next week. And on September 22nd, OCTA would acknowledge the alternative analysis, environmental impact review, and the City Council is scheduled to certify the ER this fall. That concludes our report, uh, Mayor and City Council, and thank you very much for your leadership. Thank you, and thank you for your report. And I would just note that on that very first picture that you have there, it says something like, you know, Santa Ana, Garden Grove, Artesia, and that's where the, the, the line used to go. So with that, um, let me go to Councilman Michelle Martinez, please. Um, thank you, Mayor, um, for giving me the opportunity since um, I know you've been working on this for, for a fairly long time. And my comments are not going to be as, as positive at the very beginning uh, because there is a bit of disappointment on my end. Um, you know, um, I've been on the council here now for eight years. And since its inception, when this council decided to move forward um, with um, the streetcar, the fixed guideway system, I have made it clear in every meeting that if we looked at the alternative on 4th Street, that we would look at all modes of transportation. And today, yes, our city manager is giving a presentation with adding bikeability, but prior to, 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 to today, that was not included. It was because I read the material and I found that we were not including all modes of transportation. So I want to say shame on our consultants and shame on our staff for not listening to this council. Yes, you had public outreach and they had concerns over parking, but this council, is specifically myself, I continuously, at development council meetings, I ask for multimodal to be included. How are we going to move forward when not allowing bicycles on 4th Street? Right now it is illegal to ride your bicycle on the sidewalk. We have narrow streets on 4th Street because of the parking, and you expect cyclists to go ahead and ride there. It's, it's not safe. It's dangerous. So, we're, so here we are today, yes, you made some adjustments. I personally don't agree with them 100%. And so the amendment I'm going to make here today, Mr. Mayor, is that to making sure that we, when we hire our mobility coordinator and as we approve our circulation elements in our complete streets, that we assure that we find the best approach to making sure that we're gonna have access 
to bikes being on fourth street and so that is my consideration i'm supportive of alternative one but again i just want to let you guys know i'm very disappointed that i had to catch this and that after all these years i've talked about multimodal and providing all our residents with the opportunity when we're asking for public transportation we should always include all modes of transportation and, and many residents in the business community has asked for this as well, and we just ignored it. I, I, and I'm not sure why. You know, you, you look at the correspondence of emails, which I've asked to be in, in the public record, and the excuses that, that are being made, you know, are, are just ridiculous. And so, you know, I, I'm going to stop there because I'm, I'm, I'm very frustrated, um, you know, that we had to get to this point and, and things were missed. And, I, and what I want to share with, 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 with the residents here in the business community is that let me tell you that the outreach that was done here wouldn't have taken place if we had the same city manager and the prior people that were in charge of the streetcar. We made our city manager the project manager. Prior to that, let me tell you that our consultants and our staff were working directly with our mayor and our former person who was Jill Arthur. We were not given information. Things were filtered. And today that is not the case. We are working with our consultants, we're working with OCTA, and people understand that this council named the city manager as the project manager. And so what has taken place today of all the outreach, we went overboard. Yes, can we have done more? Certainly so. But let me tell you, we made a concerted effort to assure that we did the outreach to everyone. And I believe that our staff did a, a fabulous job. We're in the process of doing a community engagement strategy because it is needed. I requested that in our five-year strategic plan. And we're going to start that process so that we understand as we move forward with any transportation projects or other projects within the city, we will have guiding principles of how we do community engagement. So I agree with you that there are times that the city government will go out and do community meetings and they have a different way of doing them and how they outreach and how they engage the community. But those days are changing. We're putting a plan together. We hope to work with building healthy communities and work with others so that we have a community um, strategy, engagement strategy that is going to work for all of us as we move forward with any project. And so I want to thank all of you for coming out here. I'm definitely excited that we're here today to make a decision like this because this is something that the city really needs. At the end of the day, when we look at public transportation, it's not only about Santa Ana. It, it is about Orange County as well. And it has to start somewhere. And, and, and we're very fortunate that it's going to start in Santa Ana because this is just the beginning of, of a system that will eventually, and it is my hope, that will end up going to John Wayne Airport off to, 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 to the beach areas. And, and that is important with the congestion that we have here today, not only in our city, but throughout Orange County, we have to find different modes of transportation. We cannot just continue to depend on the car. We have to think outside of the box and realize that we need different modes of transportation. And this is one that I believe that is going to be able to provide the residents the opportunity where they don't have to purchase a car, where they can ride this street car use their bicycles to get whatever next location they have to get to. And as we move forward with our um, train, st uh, with our um, Santa Ana train station and doing more bike share, and as we move forward with, with concluding with our circulation element, our pedestrian and bike um, pedestrian master plans, all of those things are really going to really coincide with what we're doing here today and the decision that we're making here. So the future is bright, and I'm excited, and I support Alternative 1. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other comments? Uh, Councilor Romesco, please. Um, I'd like to thank all the speakers that came out tonight to share their, their opinions on this project. I mean, it's an exciting time for our city. I think this project is not only going to help with economic development. A, a lot of our residents rely on public transportation, and I think this is going to really help get folks across town in the downtown area. Um, I also have one question um, regarding the festivities. Have we looked at any other alternatives besides closing down the, uh, the train while we have those, you know, our fiestas patrias and all the festivals we hold on 4th Street? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Mascua. There, uh, 
our ways to uh, have the streetcar uh, be active during a, uh, an event. You could uh, mitigate uh, for the streetcar. You could have uh, no cars but the streetcar. You could relocate to other streets. You could do it during the day where the streetcar may not be vital. Uh, we've done this before uh, during many different events. So where the, wherever the streetcar street car goes when you're going downtown, it's going to impact some event, uh, but we can mitigate and make sure that the events are still a success. Okay. So if we decided to go with Route 1 on 4th Street and there is a way for us to continue to operate with, even if we have festivities there, and it yes. would be a safety... It, 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 you would have limited uh, ability to have fixed structures uh, in, in the event at that time, but you could do that, maybe only close down half the street and then carry over to a different block, or you could go to uh, an entirely new area. Uh, but you could, it is possible to coexist with events. Okay, thank you. And uh, just as we move forward, if we can continue to make uh, public outreach a priority throughout uh, as we move forward with this project and also continue to work with the businesses in order to mitigate any unforeseen um, impacts that, they, that may come up as a result of construction. Thank you. Councilor Benavides, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, this, this uh, project that we're talking about here, it's been quite a few years uh, in the making. There's mentions of a vision and dream and and uh, I truly believe that uh, our city is in, in a great position, uh, that the city's uh, best days are yet ahead, and, and it's opportunities like this to really uh, to put Santa Ana on, on the map, to make us a regional leader. Uh, some of the, the, the speakers that came and presented before us or spoke here uh, before us, uh, I think uh, spoke very well with where they mentioned that a fixed guideway will help continue to lead us to uh, become that world-class city that Santa Ana uh, can be uh, the comment of great transportation, uh, creating great cities. Uh, the fact that that this uh, that, that transportation, public transit, actually connects, not divides communities. Quite a few different uh, uh, comments that were mentioned here by by members of the community, where they clearly uh, embrace and, and understand this this uh, uh, opportunity to be able to. Uh, they also mentioned the the fact that the first leg, the toughest to build, but in reality, again, uh, th there is no doubt that. Uh, public transit and mass transit is in the future of Orange County, and what better place to have that started than here in, in the city of Santa Ana. So I'm going to be supporting uh, the item. I don't know if there, there is a, a motion, but I'm going to either make, be making the motion or, or second the motion if there was a I motion. So can you clarify, uh, Councilman, what that I'm amendment is? I'm wanting to make sure um, our staff has provided um, some uh, preliminary uh, designs in how we would be able to um, provide access to multimodal, specifically bicycles. Um, I'm wanting to make sure as we move forward that um, um, we're able to have the right design. I think they just came up with this today. I think um, that there's a lot of expertise out there that could help us shape what the best design is to making sure that we have access to bicycles on 4th Street. Essentially going forward with a local pref preferred alternative, alternative number one, one and yes. then having our uh, uh, staff in future as we get into actual design uh, incorporate uh, other opportunities including bicycles. Okay, I'll yes. be supporting that. Yeah, have the question. Okay, if there's no more questions, I'd like to make a, a few comments. Um, number one, this is what I was talking about earlier about how it takes a long, long time and a lot of persistence in order to make dreams come true. Um, when I came onto this council uh, over 20 years ago, uh, the then mayor, Dan Young, was trying to do this. Um, and, uh, you know, they were working with a series of cities along Fullerton and Costa Mesa. They actually had a group of mayors, and they were trying to bring this about. Um, we uh, continue to work, and after I came out of the council, it was, uh, and I became mayor, it became a priority of mine. And at one point, we almost had it going. We had Saturn Line, first it was down Main Street, potentially, and then it was down Bristol. And look, anybody I believe that, that, that you know, lives in the city or tracks things, they've known about this. Um, and there's been a lot of work done on this. This is not something we started, you know, a month ago or a year ago or four years ago. Um, this has been since Measure M1 and now Measure M2. And I, what I'm saying is that we really need to get this started. If we don't get it started, it's going to go away, and it may go away for another 30 or 40 years. Why? Because these things go in cycles. And without money, everything else is just talk. Without money, we can have all the meetings, we can have all the communications, we can have everything we want, but nothing will ever happen. 
And the moment in time right now, which is critical, is that out of Measure M2, we have a pot of money that's set aside that I am pushing OCTA very, very hard, and it's working, to actually allocate dollars, to begin to come up with a financial plan as to how we pay for the capital, how we pay for the operations, how we make the dream a reality through financing mechanisms. Um, I can tell you that we have some alternatives, not only alternative A and B in terms of new starts and smart starts and, 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 and Washington monies, but also alternative C, which basically says that if we don't get any assistance from Washington, and that may be a possibility, we're going to do it on our own. We're going to do it with our own money. And our own money means Measure M2. It means local county money. It means CMAC. And it can also potentially mean about $80 million from the, fe from the state government in the form of our participation from the cap and trade money. The state uh, has some money based on environmental uh, uh, you know, prerogatives. And frankly, this is the only project in the county that is so green that it would qualify for those monies. So what I'm telling you is, one way or another, this project, I believe, is going to get done. Um, and as I've taken people on tours, and I wish I could take everybody on a tour, but I've gone on several bus tours where we've met, uh, you know, groups of, uh, you know, downtown merchants, South Main merchants, uh, historical society people, um, you know, different uh, uh, businesses. And, and I've gone on many of these tours. And by the way, there's been about 40 tours. Um, I know some have included council members in the past, but most of it was done, was done by staff, and it was staff before the current staff arrived. So, so you know, many of you know about this project because it's been, you know, uh, you know, discussed and thoroughly analyzed and supported for a long, long time. Um, and as it goes forward, I think it'll continue to improve. I think we can continue to look at, at, you know, not only like, you know, potential bike lanes, and I'm not sure, you know, exactly where what makes the best sense, but we need to maximize this project. But I'll tell you this, do this on your own. Just drive down Santa Ana Boulevard sometime and get right there to Rate Street. Santa Ana Boulevard and Rate Street. That's part of where this route would go. When you get there, just stop and look around. That's where the old Pacific Electric right of way begins, because Santa Ana Boulevard would act, it, it actually continues, and it used to be the PE right of way. All the PE means the Pacific Electric. It just means the red car line. It's where it used to go. So as we go uh, east of that point, Santa Ana Boulevard and Ray Street, um, it's Santa Ana Boulevard. And as you go west of that today, it's capped off. It's just an ugly fence with barbed wire and chain link and, 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 and businesses or homes around it that are very much struggling. And, and, and so take a drive. If you doubt this is a good project, take a drive down there and look at that intersection because this project will enliven that intersection. It'll open up that fenced off area and there will be a new rail that's going there and there will be landscaping, and there will be bike lanes, and pedestrian access, and, and, and beauty, and a connectivity to the river, which is also something I think we should work on long term, you know, beautifying that river and doing something better with the Santa Ana River than we're currently doing. But, but this project, this streetcar, it, it, I think we ought to call it something like the Orange Line or something, because that's what it's going to be. This is going to be a line that's going to light up this part of Orange County. And it's not just going to go from, from the downtown and the transportation center and the civic center over to Rate and beyond to the, to the west onto Harbor Boulevard. When we get to Harbor Boulevard, guess what else is going to happen on the 22nd of September? There's going to be a, another vote that, that, that the city manager didn't put on because it really is not directly germane to us because that other vote is going to be to begin a study on Harbor Boulevard to the north. Now that's not Santa Ana, because to the north of, of Westminster, and you get to Garden Grove Freeway, that's Garden Grove. But that study is going to begin to look at Harbor Boulevard going north. And guess where it's going to go? It's going to go to Harbor Boulevard and Catella. And when you get to Harbor Boulevard and Catella, that's Disneyland. 
So we're going to do, the next thing we're doing right now is a study to connect this project to Disneyland. But guess what? It's not going to stop there. Because right now in Los Angeles, they're looking at Measure R, which is looking at either the 60 freeway having a line or another line, which is going to come you know, uh, uh, further south, and it's going to come into Whittier and La Habra and Fullerton. And guess what that does? That's Harbor Boulevard, from our perspective, going north. Eventually, we're going to connect to the Fullerton Transportation Center. So now you've got something that, 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 that will go on into Los Angeles. Also, many of us uh, you know, fought very hard, and we got very close. We actually got OCTA to spend $36 million on engineering to do Centerline. Centerline is a project that goes on Bristol South to the airport. That is still there. Those drawings are still there. And guess what? If you check out Bristol, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. And part of this vision has been let's widen Bristol. I was able to get $225 million from OCTA, the only project in the county like that, by the way, to widen Bristol. But now that it's being widened, it can't accommodate a mixed flow uh, a route that would go down to the airport. We forgot also to accommodate bike lanes as well. And we, we can. Fixed, we Bristol's fixed it, pretty wide. Well, no, we fixed the problem in our park. Br Bristol, and now we're doing complete streets, and Bristol is wide. But look, without money, we'd just be docking. There'd be no discussion about bike lanes or no bike lanes or sidewalks or center line or anything. What I'm telling you is that is now a possibility. And I think we should all be dreaming this dream that is going to connect us to the airport, the Santa Ana Airport, by the way. I don't know if you got there, seen there recently, but it says in the International Terminal, it says John Wayne Airport, Santa Ana, California, and that's a good thing. And, and, and so, so Centerline, I think, in the near future can be dusted off. I think it'll connect to the airport. I think it'll go north on Harbor all the way to Fullerton. Also, eventually, guess what? Where we're stopping right now on this leg, if you go along that Pacific Electric, the red line car, if you see that photo that we showed earlier, it said Santa Ana Garden Grove Artesia. Well, that's because that goes towards Artesia. Eventually, we'll be connected to LA, I think, to the north and along that PE right away. And, 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 and you know what's going to happen? Right now, we're the beginning, we're the central core. But you've got to ask yourself this question. If you're going to start anywhere in Orange County, where should you start? And the, yes, the answer is right here. So, so if people say, well, gee, where is it going? And what about your ridership numbers? Guess what? When they started in LA with one line, they had very small numbers. When they did two or three lines, their numbers started to go up. Now it's an explosion. Now everybody's starting to use it. Now you can go all throughout you know, the, the area and more and more people are using it because you can get to more and more places. And that's what's going to happen here. So in the future, we're going to have somebody arrive at, 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 at the airport, get on a line, come into Santa Ana. Or somebody else is going to fly and, or, or, or drive or come into to Disneyland and they're going to say, let's go to downtown Santa Ana to the Artist Village. Let's go, let's go downtown Santa Ana to have something to eat. It, it, it'll become a hub. It'll become a center. Properties that are adjacent to it are going to be much more desirable. And, and, and I think that is all a wonderful thing. So, so look, it's been decades of work not days, not one staff member or two, not one mayor or two. It's been a whole lot of folks working on this, but at this point, we're at the cusp. We're at that tipping point. We're at the point where this is going to begin to happen. At the next OCTA meeting, and I attended that, that uh, uh, committee meeting that the city manager was talking about, and, 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 and I got full support from the board members that were present. And I think we're going to get very, very strong support at our next uh, transportation uh, agency authority meeting. And at that point, this really opens up. Because then we're talking out not just about the contract for project management. Soon we'll be talking about the contract for final design. Then we'll be talking about the contract for construction. Then we're talking about you know, operating agreements. 
and 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 you're just going to see this over the next one two three four years it's just all gonna all gonna light up and uh, so with that um, I support uh, the motion before us and those in favor please aye. say aye. Aye. aye aye motion passes unanimously congratulations to everybody um, Mr. Uh, Benavides I think is going to have to leave so uh, do we have any other business we need to conduct uh, uh, any consent calendar item that's important um, do we have any concerns well, on the consent the, calendar I thought we were going to do the 85A are we going to when were you going to continue it? Let's continue it right now, or what do you want to do? Just really quick, yeah, just... How many speakers do we have? We have uh, a few speakers. Well, what, do you, what do you want to do with that, Councillor Martinez? I'm certain that, you know, if we don't... Um, Can we continue I'll, I'll ask, it two weeks? Do you guys weeks? want us to continue it, or do you just want me to move forward with my motion? All right, so we'll continue the item to the next meeting then because we're not going to have a quorum. We don't have time to speak and we won't have a quorum. Have a quorum. He has to leave. Okay, well, we're going to just... just to we'll, we'll do public comment, but we're going to lose another council member and three council members can't conduct business. So, yes, Mr. City Manager. Mayor, what, what, uh, could we... Uh, at least move the consent uh, agenda items that there's not going to be pulled. All right, let's just do the consent calendar real quick. Uh, do we have any items on the consent calendar we wish to pull? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. So consent calendar uh, passes. So what I will do is I will just uh, sit here with my uh, with two remaining council members and we'll just hear testimony and meetings over for all intents and purposes. Um, anybody wish to address us? Rob, you're welcome, Council Member uh, Benavides. Uh, Robin Cook, uh, Craig Duffy, Ramon Savala, or Maria Ramirez. I guess I'll just take my two items and add them to, together. Uh, on 20A, I Let's uh, take a, a brief uh, break. Uh, we uh, so just hold on for a moment. I'm going to take a, br a brief recess. Mr. Cook. Okay, um, I wanted to make a, a public comment on 20A. Uh, a good start to public safety. There are some people who will say it was a waste of money. I say local government's main purpose is public safety and not supplying recreational marijuana disguised as medicine. There was somebody who said 
voting was a waste of money on this issue. I guess that person got high before he talked and forgot that voting is a right. Until the voters have their say so, I hope you'll continue directing the police department code and legal staff to deal with the businesses that are operating illegally according to your city code. Um, the next item I had was 85A. I registered my bikes at the Nation's Night Out at Willard eight years ago. Currently, to register the bikes, you need to go to the jail on Thursdays from 12.30 to 4 p.m. Maybe the locations can be expanded. I was just told by Steve that the Nation's Night Outs and other things do take care of registrations at the same time. Um, I do see a problem with share the road. Bike riding, share the road, bike riding. It is unsafe. When my grandkids and I rode our bikes in the downtown business district, we always rode on the sidewalks. I saw the signs, but safety was more important to me. And I like your comment on that bike lane on the preferred blah, blah, one. <laughs> Thank okay, you. That's it. Thank you for the blah, blah, one. Um, go ahead, please. Uh, my name's Craig Durfee, founder of Distracted Driving Awareness Complete Streets. Um, I saw the concerns of the article of the Voiceville C of the individual concerned about bicycle registration, sidewalk issue. Um, I've known this for over a year, but to get a voice of one person where you get a thousand million, million people to vote for you is a whole different picture. I think that we have a misconception about this whole thing. I think there's a flaw in this whole pro process, and that's a lack of education. In the 70s, when I went through this process, I had my bike registered. If I lost it, I could find it. My in-law lost his bike because my son took it to a store. They ripped it off. It went to Frisco. It came back with a front wheel missing. It cost me 200 bucks. So no matter how you look at it, ownership and having a proof of ownership is important to return your property. And the CVC code 21200 bicycle states that the rules of the road set out in Division 11 of the California Vehicle Code does not specifically apply only to motor vehicles, but applicable to cyclists. The essence of this is when you ride your bike on the road, you follow the same rules and the same privileges as a motor vehicle. And to say that you're being picked on by the police that you're being, because you're homeless, is because you're being picked on. There's a lot of things we can do to correct that. But bicycle registration and the many other provisions I've wrote here, would that take here tonight because of the short time, is a lack of education and awareness. And I would encourage uh, you to look at City of Davis, with the City of uh, Davis and the uh, University, and what they did is to avoid the Fourth Amendment issue. What they did is they put the registration tag on the bar of where it's visible with the California state license and every three years, I would encourage the city to go back and look at- If you're gonna wrap up, please. Okay, uh, so the essence is I support the licenses. I support uh, OCTA uh, to get on the ball and start educating the communities. Thank you. Uh, Ramon Savala and then uh, Marina Ramirez. Thank you, Council, for staying so very late. Uh, my name is Ramon Zavala. I'm the head of sustainable transportation at the University of California, Irvine, also the university's primary bicycle coordinator. I serve on the board of directors for the Orange County Bicycle Coalition, and I'm a League of American Bicyclists certified instructor. It's fair to say that I'm a committed bike nerd, and it is my responsibility at the university throughout Orange County, and even nationally throughout the many conferences that I speak at, to provide best practices when it comes to facilitating bicycle transportation. Now, I'm here to speak about the value of bicycle registration. It is a great, fact, uh, a great option to promote uh, in, in the means of promoting bicycle security because most people who own bicycles do not have any clue what make or what model they have, let alone what serial number is actually uh, inscribed at the bottom of their uh, bicycle. However, 
to implement a mandatory bicycle registration system, it is the opinion of the Orange County Bicycle Coalition that you have to have two prongs met if you're going to uh, implement equitably. First, you have to have a reason for bicycle registration. Now, the, the main reason for having a bicycle uh, registered is so that if it is stolen and recovered, the police department can re return the bicycle back to the owner. Now, the Orange County Bicycle Coalition will not pretend to know how good the Santa Ana Police Department is in their counter bike theft or anti bike theft efforts, or how frequently they're actually able to return bicycles to their owners. But we do know how difficult it is for prong two, which is to actually get your bicycle registered. It must be convenient. As was previously mentioned, uh, bicycles are only uh, registered regularly at the Santa Ana Police Department Thursdays, 12.30 to 4 p.m. In the opinion of the Orange County Bicycle Coalition, one day, of week, one day a week, during work hours, during a weekday, for only three and a half hours is insufficient to facilitate all the registrations in the 27 and a half mile, uh, square mile property of the city of Santa Ana. So while we do support the concept of bicycle registration, we would fully support the repeal of Santa Ana's mandatory bicycle registration law. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your comments. By the way, I know you're doing a good job at UCI. I've been out there, and a lot of, a lot of folks riding a lot of bikes. Marina, please. Yes, good evening, City Council staff. Um, thank you for allowing us to speak um, on this issue. And um, just to touch basis on... Um, Excuse my phone. Just to touch basis on uh, the lightweight rail system, as Michelle Martinez had mentioned, of making that a complete street. We just want to uh, thank you for, for mentioning that and bringing that. Um, as green as lightweight is, nothing is greener and healthier than bicy bicycling. And I'm glad that it's finally and um, on, the, on the table. And on Santa Ana Active Streets Coalition, which I'm here to represent, we're always available um, to, to talk and to to see what would be the best um, alternative for making a more complete streets. Um, just on um, what some colleagues were, were mentioning, um, in theory it is a great idea to um, license your bicycle, again, to recover your bike if it is stolen. Um, but in practice, it's as we have just seen by um, a case a few weeks ago, it's misenforced by PD and uh, and Santa Ana's, uh, the bicycle community in Santa Ana is predominantly working class and they are just unaware that they have to have their, their bike um, license. So uh, Santa Ana Active Streets Coalition, we would just like to um, request um, a community meeting with the city and any other um, interested parties and stakeholders, residents, so we could talk more about this issue because as you, you see, it, it is a complex issue. Um, so we just want to um, be able to talk a little bit more about this. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome to do so. I don't know if Councilman Martinez would like to take the lead, but us and our city manager should be involved. But we welcome your input and uh, as a continual process. Um, with that, uh, Steve McGuigan, please. Well, that was quick. I came late to the party. I apologize for that. Um, I was actually at National Night Out tonight. For those of you that couldn't make it, it was a wonderful event, very well attended by the Delhi East Side and uh, many part or many street neighborhoods. A lot of people came out for it. A lot of kids came out for it, and they got a lot of valuable information. So I think that really helps. Um, I saw a lot of the people interfacing with the police that were there, and that that's exceptional because uh, we really need that in that part of the community. Um, in terms of the bicycle licensing, one of the things that I find interesting is, is if, in my job, when one person says something, statistically it means nothing. When a couple people say it, then we kind of look at it and we put it as a trend possibly. But until it actually starts to show up on a regular basis, it's not a problem. It's not something you need to emergency jump and address. Um, we have bicycle and pedestrian safety events that are going on around the city. We've had a couple this year. Um, 
Carlos Rojas, our, our police chief's team, has put these together, and, and um, the West End COP has helped with that. And at each one of those outreach events, we have provided free bicycle licensing for all of the people that attend there. And the next one coming up will actually be in October at the Willard neighborhood, another very dense neighborhood, and we hope that you can help us with the outreach to make sure that all the bicycle riders bring their bikes out. I think it's a great idea to have your bike registered. I've had a bicycle stolen, and having all the information on file was the only reason that I was able to get that bicycle back. I think that that's a very important part of the process. To that end, um, the West End substation is also another place where you can go and get it registered, although the main station is the only one that's listed. If you show up with your bike anytime at the West End substation when it's open, they will take care of you over there. Um, so there are opportunities to get a bike license. It's not like it's the most impossible thing and there has to be something done right away. But if you want to continue this process and make it easy for people to do that, it's important to keep a West End substation. And that's something we're talking about as we talk about light rail and Harbor Boulevard and all of the planning going along there. We want you guys to keep your eye on the ball and make sure that even if the substation doesn't stay where it is right now in the Riverview Station, that somewhere along that corridor, somewhere on the west side of town, that you make a provision where one of your developers will put in a West End substation because that's been an important component of the community-oriented policing process and it makes it very easy for those of us that need to do things like bicycle registrations over on that part of town that find it difficult to get all the way over here to the police department. So something to consider as you do your future planning for that area. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that, Steve. Um, I, I still have other speakers, but um, some were here for item 20A and some were here for item 50A. So when I'm, gonna, I'm not sure who to call upon is what I'm saying. So I'm just going to call a bunch of names, and if folks are here, they come up and speak. If they've gone, they've gone. And then if I've missed anybody, just come down to the clerk and tell her, and I'll call. So with that, let me start with uh, Ryan Bloom. If Ryan's not here, uh, Marion uh, Phillips, Marion Phillips, uh, Philip uh, Escobedo, uh, Victoria, please go ahead. Want to thank you guys for staying. Absolutely, please go ahead. I am a long Speak into the mic. Oh, sorry. Long time Say, resident. Give us your name. Marion Phillips. Got it. Long time resident of Santa Ana, voter. I voted for legalizing medical marijuana. My husband wakes up in pain, goes to bed in pain. Doctors just want to give him more pain pills. With medical marijuana, we have found a way to manage his pain. So when you raided those dispensaries, you took away his ability to manage pain. I didn't appreciate it. So it affects my vote. My husband's been through a raid at a, reg at a dispensary where they came in with masks on and guns drawn. I don't know what the others went through, but it traumatized him. So reconsider sending out parties to raid these dispensaries. Because people live in pain, and the pain pills, they don't allow for a life. You're either under the influence of heavy, heavy narcotics, where you can't function or you have the ability to coexist with your family. Thank you. Thank you. Victoria Pappas, or Matthew Pappas, and uh, Coyle. Yes, go on, come on down, please. Thank you, Council, so much. And uh, first of all, I just want to have two points. Uh, first, I want to urge the Council and uh, the City Manager and Attorney and Police Chief to continue to allocate resources towards the, the effective enforcement of the existing ban. I mean, it's, it's already a law, and we're, we're enforcing it, and that's great. July 15th, we allocated half a million dollars, made 42 arrests. Uh, out of those, 9 out of 10 were from outside the City of Santa Ana. I mean, 9 out of 10 of those arrests were not residents, so that tells me that Santa Ana does not benefit from these things. And we don't want these things in our community. And I don't think we should think of money allocated towards the enforcement as taking money away from the schools and parks and transportation that we want. We, we all want that. You want a better community, so do we. What we don't want is to build these schools, parks, et cetera, 
and put these pot shops next to them and it undermines everything that we've done. So we need to consider that money as an investment towards the effectiveness and sustainability of our community. I say uh, money towards enforcing of the ban is money towards our schools, is money towards parks and libraries and everything else. Now, second point, I want to uh, urge every registered voter here to vote no on both marijuana initiatives because both of them want to delete the ban and make these dispensaries legal in our community. We do not want that. So <laughs> they call they call the cannabis restrictions and limitations initiative, but that's very misleading and it's a lie. They do not restrict or limit anything. They want to take away all restrictions and just let them have carte blanche everywhere. So don't let them trick you. Don't, don't do it. They, they want to make sure that we don't know that there is an existing ban and want us to vote on them. They want us to, to be tricked. Don't let them do it. Uh, they say we're going to raise tax funds, but I, I tell you, it's a dirty, dirty business. I don't think the city council prepared to regulate something like that for raising taxes, nor should you even have to. Uh, they also say that uh, if we take away dispensaries, it's going to bring the drug cartels into our neighborhoods, but that's a lie. You know, I, if you think that they're going to, they're doing their part to fight the drug cartels, then we've been duped. That they are a drug cartel. So anyway, vote no on both initiatives. Thank you so much. Michael uh, Kelly. Hello, Council. I want to thank you guys for uh, waiting for us to speak here tonight. Sonia and David, I want to commend you guys. After watching you guys for the past few months, uh, become a big fan. I uh, actually work at a, uh, one of these dispensaries and uh, was arrested last Thursday. <clears throat> a couple days before my birthday, the first time I've ever been arrested in my life, and I've been going there six days a week for the past five years, and I just went there just like any other normal day. At that point, I was put into what you guys call a paddy wagon. And it goes about like six people deep, and there's like two rows, and then sheet metal. It's about 115 degrees probably inside. When we were all stacked in there, we were driven to another uh, medical marijuana clinic where they were going to put more people in there. And I'm claustrophobic. I also have a couple heart conditions, PVC and AFib. And I've seen a lot of commercials about uh, atrial fibrillation lately, but uh, fortunately, I suffer from that. I spoke to the officer said, hey, there's no air in here, we're, we're suffocating. And they just laughed and went, oh, well, we forgot to put the air on. So after that, I talked to uh, Officer Lolo. I believe he's a younger officer. He said he was 21. He was the only one that would listen to me, and he actually put me in the squad car to transport me to jail. At that point, once we were following the van, they pulled over, and the police got out and got ice cream from an ice cream vendor while the rest of the people, the, the volunteers for the, the clinics were in the van still, without the fan, I assume, still uh, suffering in there. And that was just ridiculous. I don't know how that would be, be justice. I mean, I could see the humor in a prank in someone if they were criminals. But these people are just volunteering for sick people. And I understand the community is polarized, obviously. On this issue, you have two gentlemen that, that really don't want the, the clinics. And, and, it's really a rough situation, but you got to remember, it, 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 it is here in Santa Ana, and it's just uh, something that we're all going to have to face and, and work through. There's already two initiatives, and I've met with a few of, few of the people on the staff here about it. And, um, you know, as far as the $500,000 going towards this, this issue, this is, this is not solving anything. It's putting a bunch of innocent people in jail, putting it on the record. It's inconvenient for the record, a lot of people. The five hundred thousand dollars has not been approved, and so our police department's been doing this without the five hundred thousand dollars. So I just want to state that we cannot well, vote way, on this today. Okay. Well, regardless, I mean, this is not effective. They're all still open. If anything, it's unifying them to push harder. I mean, we we we've. we've tried to reach to you guys to, to come to some kind of agreement, some kind of a conclusion to end this fight. It's a, you know, it's a war between the, the community at this point, and that, that's not, that's not going to benefit anybody. I think all of us can agree on that. So, you know, try to take a different approach is all I'm saying. Going and arresting all these people, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, if they were criminals, absolutely. But being treated like this is just really unfair. So please reconsider before you send out the police. Or Thank at least, you. At least let them know, hey, this is the situation. You know, Michael, I think you're, you're out right. of time, but thank, thank you. you. Uh, Ray, <laughs> Ross, Ross, Rock, followed by uh, Candace Haas. 
And after that, Elizabeth Lopez. Hello, remaining uh, council members and mayor. Um, I'm here to get uh, to talk about the raids. Unfortunately, we had to wait three hours to be able to speak to you guys in public comment, and I lost many patients who can't stand as long. But that is nothing compared to the many hours that medical marijuana patients and volunteers spent locked away in jail in the back of these paddy wagons. As you guys know, on, four, on 717 and the day, or 716 six, seven, and 717, seven, you guys arrested 42 people. Then on 731, you guys arrested another 78 people. That's what the Sheriff's Department told the people that were being arrested. They said they've never seen anything like this before, and who the hell did you guys piss off to be treated like this? So you guys arrested 120 people. Every single one of those collectives is back open. So what has been accomplished with the actions that have been taken. There is a lot of negative press aimed at the city council right now. So if you guys aren't the ones that directed them to do this, you guys need to rein them in and you need to have them apologize to all these people for what they did because it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to arrest people and put them through this just to give them a code enforcement violation, a $500 ticket that the sheriff's department said that they've never seen anybody arrested for before. It's ridiculous. A lot of people already had, were, had to leave so they can't recount all their stories of what happened. But you guys did not just arrest the, the operators, not just the volunteers, but you guys actually arrested patients that were in there just to get their medical marijuana. Just patients. Several of them. I have their names and their whole stories. Um, you guys also arrested security guards that were, um, you know, making sure that the, the location was safe. Eleven security guards were arrested that were outside the locations. Your guys' police officers told them that if they come back to work another day that they would take their guard cards from them. The police are out of control. They are causing you guys tons of bad PR. I think that you guys are trying to gain support for your guys' regulation bill, but what you've done is unify all the medical marijuana collectives against you. There is actually collectives that want to support your guys' regulation measure, but after what the police department did, they don't feel like they can trust you guys. Your guys' measure has a lot of um, leeway. You guys give the police department the ability to come in to, um, to uh, look at the records of the patient's names, and we don't really trust that they could carry that out. Also, you give the planning department the ability to choose which applications are acceptable, and I really doubt that your guys' agency has the, the patient's best uh, intentions in mind. I also wanted to throw out real quick, because my time is coming up, that people in paddy wagons were forced to urinate on themselves. They were, when they brought, were brought into jail, they were stuffed 30 people into an eight, eight-person cell. If they questioned their detainment, they were ripped out and they were thrown into sol solitary confinement. Several of the people that were arrested were single mothers whose kids were in daycare. There was no one to pick up their kids. They weren't even allowed to make phone calls until hours later when they were booked to make calls. This devastated families. People who did this as a profession, armed security guards, have to find new jobs. You know, you guys have caused a lot of problems. Also, just one more thing, when the cops left the locations, they did not lock them, leaving them open for children and for unauthorized people to gain access to medical marijuana. What the hell, you guys? Come on, you guys are doing this to yourselves. I don't know. After uh, Elizabeth uh, Guy Lopez. There must be a disconnect between the city authorities office, which I assume is familiar with the state and federal constitutions, and the Santa Ana Police Department, which engaged in numerous medical marijuana collective raids on 731-14. Let's be frank, though. They were brutal attacks. Raids is too light a term to describe what happened. I am shocked. I am shocked. I am so shocked. Patients arrested and cater crowded around in a paddy wagon for hours with no air conditioning. People denied heart medication. No warrants. Improper use of reliable NCLS. There are far more violations to, bo to avoid further actions that might be for forthcoming, perhaps the police should be trained on what excessive force is regard to nonviolent misdemeanors. Considering that the violation charge is one irrelevant to not having a permit for a sign, the methods used by the city police officers were far out of out of line. From guns to cops like break-ins, the conic was the the conduct was outrageous. Although you're not in, you're not an insurance company, perhaps the chief needs to 
<laughs> okay, need, needs to up his estimate on what your enforcement costs are going to be here. When, when you estimate the litigation and potential judgment costs of the city will have here, the estimates should be multiplied by at least five. Complaint, you're not even listening to me, Mayor. Like, really? Really, Mayor? I'm right here. I'm right here, Mayor. Complying with the Constitution, you can still achieve the city's disclaimer goals, while someday it will pay for the dis... I'm so pissed off right now. <laughs> pay for the discrimination. Perhaps it should consider reducing liability by training officers to themselves obey the law. Guy Lopez, followed by Aaron uh, Jaffering. Good day, City Council. How are you doing? Hello, my name is Guy Lopez. I am a medical marijuana patient. I live in District 46. Um, I live in Santa Ana, too, as well. Um, someone I know and love and care about works in a medical marijuana clinic. This week, July 31st, Santa Ana, the city of Santa Ana and the city police department arrested and jailed 70 individuals either used or relied upon and volunteered or work at a Santa Ana dispensary. They did this by using a half a million allocated by Santa Ana City Council to um, intentionally attack. I don't know if you guys, like you said, you did or did not, but it's, but it was allocated. It was one of your things that you had pushed out there to be, to have this pushed out. Um, to make the, oh, I lost my place. <sighs> Industry workers thereby putting the patients in possible, that makes it nearly impossible to get their meds. Taking away their safe access to medical cannabis forces them into the street to find cannabis and possibly from dangerous criminals elements without supervision and age limits or any type of quality control. No, no, not to mention the interrupted ongoing current planning of management programs that have not been costly, but lengthy for some people in cases. The possibility of causing problems in their health, in, pe in people's health, and therefore forcing possibly decline in people's health. Please stop this insensitivity raids and arrests. I know you did, you haven't, you know, allocated or it hasn't been done, but it has, it's out there. It's five, five million to the police to do this. I know they're working on their own dime, supposedly, but all these arrests and everything, it hurts, really. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Aaron Jaffarian, followed by Keith uh, Dawson. If Keith isn't here, Robin Cook. You you spoke okay. Uh, you just submitted more than one card then, and and with that, I've gone through other cards. Is there anybody else that wishes to address us? Emma, come on down. If you're here, just come, just give the name and. And after that, Irma Macias and Barbara Lemire, please go ahead. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. What's left of the council at the uh, dais? Thank you very much for staying behind to hear these words. Normally I come before the council and before a, uh, a municipal body with a very well-crafted delivery so that I can take the most advantage of the time that I have before the council, but tonight I didn't do that. Tonight I wanted to come to you and speak to you from my heart and unprepared. A couple of things that I wanted to bring up is that I am applauding the city on trying to do something at this late stage. They obviously did not need the money they be in the police department to start going out and abating or illegal dispensaries. 
they've done it this whole last week or two weeks without the additional five hundred dollars because as Michelle or pardon me councilwoman Martinez has poignantly pointed out that has not been approved by the council yet so the question becomes is what was the police department doing for the six years that this aberrant condition has proliferated throughout the city I've asked the chief of police several times to return telephone calls, but his commander, Ken Grominski, can't seem to get him to do that, or he can't seem to find the will to do that on his own. I'll reinstate that request to you eye to eye right now, sir, that I expect to speak with you, and I expect that you would have the tenacity to meet with your constituents. I own businesses in this city, and I expect to meet with my police department. One of the residents came before the council this evening and is completely misinformed, urging everyone to, to vote no on the two ballot initiatives that are coming up in November. A no vote will just continue what the city is dealing with today. The dispensaries already have a carte blanche on their operations in this city. That's been well demonstrated by the fact that over 80 of them exist and more than, or rather two have re-emerged or rather have emerged in just the last couple of weeks according to the Latino constituents that I've been speaking to. So we need to start taking a new approach to this. The old approach has not been working to date. We have a new city manager and I think that he should probably try to take some of the helm on this as we do not have a full-time council. You need to start speaking to the stakeholders that do know this community, do know the medical marijuana advocacy, which I'm one of and I have dealt with cities for decades on this. But I can't seem to get a phone call from any of the board or rather council members on this dais. The only one that's done so has been Miss Martinez and I commend her for that. So I will continue to reach out to all the members on the dais and I will hope to have some direct conversations in the weeks to come on this matter. Because it is an important matter and it cannot be forgotten. We have to remember that these are patients, and I see that my time has gone up, so I'll, cl I'll close this quickly. These are patients that we're dealing with. These aren't people to put into paddy wagons in unair un conditioned conditions for hours and to be held in holding cells when all you're going to do is a sight and release. Thank you very much. Uh, please come on up, and then after that, Irma, and then Barbara. Good evening, Council and the citizens of Santa Ana. I'll speak tonight as a patient, citizen, and father. Give us your name, please. My name is Charles Stocks. As one of the thousands of parents of children with severe conditions that are helped by marijuana and, pati and a patient that uses medical marijuana to mitigate the symptoms of multiple life traumas and as a tax-paying citizen that truly believes in the greater good, I'd like to say to you all, you made a big mistake on July 31st. The dispensary raids put in action by the council, led by Councilwoman Martinez, are reprehensible and not in tune with the community's sympathies and needs. In denying vital care to the citizens of our community and misappropriating vital public funds for capricious and intimidating tactics implemented by public servants who know our community would, could, and should be better served by that funding, you would epically fail in your primary responsibility to the community. Increase the common good. Responsibly run co cooperatives are good for Santa Ana, and they increase the greater good and help the people's quality of life. Let's move forward as a community and recognize that Gestapo tactics are a waste of money and time. Raids scare everyone, like the 84-year-old lady in the cooperative, five minutes before your police action on July 31st. This police action, or these council actions, detract from the public's safety, comfort, and access to necessary care. Be ahead of the curve and get out of the trough for the sake of your constituency, if not their vote. Uh, Mayor, if you don't mind, Irvin was asked me to speak for, on, on her behalf, and I'm, I'm Carl Benninger. I live in Santa Ana. And one of my uh, different hats that I wear is I'm chairman of the Measure G Oversight uh, Committee for the Santa Ana School Board. I just want to make sure that everyone aware, be aware of the groundbreaking ceremonies that's going to occur at Valley High on August 18th at 4 p.m. One of the new measures brought, or I should say uh, Rick Bill, the new superintendent, 
saw the need of community efforts. And what's going to happen is that an old bit of field is going to be converted into a multiple sports complex. Valley will going to have a first class stadium. They're going to put in baseball fields to replace the one that is not properly placed. They're going to improve soccer fields, two soccer fields. And it'll be artificial turf, state of the art. It's going to benefit the youth of Santa Ana. So if you could make the grand, the opening, the, the groundbreaking ceremony on August 18th at 4 p.m. at Valley High, I, I welcome you. Also, my another hat, I'm Vice Pre President of uh, uh, Comlink, and that's August 28th at Bowers Museum. You're all invited to celebrate in our 25th year of uh, operations. 25 years ago, Mayor Young and Mayor, you were on the council, and we appreciate the support that we've had from all of you over the last 25 years. We're going to celebrate that at Bowers at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, August 28th. You're all, all the welcome. And let me just add one thing. As a citizen of Santa Ana who had a dispensary open near my house, and I saw the lottery, and I saw the trash, I saw teenagers hanging there getting marijuana from other people, thank you for enforcing the law. Barbara, how are you doing tonight? I'm fine. I hung out here. I said, they're going to put me last. Was I right? No. No. Thomas Gordon's going to go after you. Oh, yay, Tom. He's my friend, too. All right. Well, I went to the prey meeting, and you're the only one here that was there. Everybody's left. About the six months of what's going on with Centennial. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You were. Thank you. Thank I, I like that. Uh, I went to the prey meeting. You haven't met your goal for the conversion. Why are we having a conversion? If I lease property for 30 years, do I have a right to say, I want a conversion, I don't want to move out? Why have you given this power? You know, their buildings were temporary buildings. They're still temporary. They're costing too much to repair. They have water and sewer problems. And they park up our whole park, Monday through Saturday. Let's think about this. We've been hearing all night how crowded we are. That's with kids, too. And they need an open space. And that's a lovely part of the park over there. It's very peaceful. And we can find something to do. We need to do like they do in Costa Mesa. They have their Fairview Park Citizens Advisory Committee. This was all things people wanted. When the public came out, they put it down. People that used the park said what should be there. We need that for our park. Take back Centennial. Let's make it our park. Ours for our kids, our families, and everyone. Please think about it. It's not over, but you're still scratching the bottom for places to make a conversion. It's our park. 34 years without us being able to use that area and lack of parking, it's time to get on. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, does anybody else want to speak? Because uh, if not, Thomas, you're the next speaker. Good evening, Council uh, and City Manager. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, look, I voted for Prop 215. I support people that have a true, urgent medical need to use the drug of their choice. However, the people of the Santa Ana, City of Santa Ana have spoken. Um, we have more drug shops, and that's what they are, drug shops. They are not medical marijuana clinics. They do not dispense medical marijuana. They're selling dabs and waxes and all kinds of things. If you want to get your medical marijuana, open a medical marijuana business, get your 5013C, become a collective, and, and do it legally the way you're supposed to do it. Instead, you're selling drugs next to schools. We have more drug places, retail operations in the city of Santa Ana than schools, elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. We have more drug businesses in Santa Ana than we have banks. We have more drug businesses in the city of Santa Ana than we have parks. We have more drug businesses in the city of Santa Ana than we have supermarkets. Why? 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 We, no, that's not true either. <clears throat> no. We might have more liquor licenses. However, why does everybody come to Santa Ana for drugs? The people that live here have said enough is enough. Enough is enough. I think that people need to get off their butts and petition Congress. Congress needs to clean this up like everything else that they've dropped the ball on so that you can go down to your Kaiser or your Blue Cross or your Blue Shield or wherever it is that you go 
and, and get your drugs the same place you get your insulin, the same place you get your Vicodin, the same place you get your high blood pressure medicine. If it's a drug, let's treat it like a drug and let's not tax it. Why are we taxing people's medical necessities? It's, it's absolutely, I'm not having a conversation with you, sir. Thank you. L let's absolutely address this issue like the people of Santa Ana have asked this issue to be addressed. Not a bunch of people from outside that come here with bags of cash and ask the city of Santa Ana to deal with this issue. It's absolutely unacceptable. Um, secondly, I'd like to defend the Santa Ana Police Department. I absolutely find it hard to believe. Um, I, I volunteer a, a lot at a lot of events. I just came from National Night Out. I, I do not believe that we had officers stuff 50 people into the back of a 150 degree paddy wagon and stop for ice cream. That's absolutely ludicrous. And, and I'm sorry, that is unbelievable. And making up stories like that doesn't help anybody's cause or belief. The city of Santa Ana and the residents... Let him speak, please. Wow. The people of Santa Ana have said enough is enough. These places are right across the street from schools. They're right next to people's homes. They're there all day and night. It looks like a Jeff Spicoli movie with people pouring out of cars to go into these businesses. We see it day and night, and it's unacceptable. Let's enforce the law. Let's enforce the law, and I thank you all for doing so. With that... Um that was our last speaker. Do we have any council comments? City Attorney, can we make council comments at this time, or should we just adjourn? I think we just adjourn and let's go home. We don't have a meeting. Let's go home. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're, uh, let's just go home then. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we're wrapped up.